The drama starts with the news on TV about Millennium or Y2K bugging, where the calendar data cannot be set after 2000. It made the world chaotic, because the computer thought 00 was 1900 not 2000. After that, there was a mother who was cutting her son's nails, but she told him eventually he couldn't cut the nail at night because the mouse could eat that and it can change to human and form like his son's face. Then she told him to make sure to throw nails in the trash. But it turned out that her son named and song went somewhere else and threw his nails in many places so that many mice would form like him to help him to go to school, do his homework and help his mother to wash the dishes and clothes. Hearing that, his mother just laughed. After that, the scene moved to 2022. There was a granny who gave an apple to a little girl, then the girl fainted. But it turned out it was a silver lining VR lens demonstration, a technology that could blur the boundaries of the real world and cyberspace. A guy explained about VR lens to the reporters, but they asked questions that weren't related to VR technology. Then there was another little girl who wanted to get closer with a snow white clown, but the clown smelled of alcohol. The clown, who was the grown up in song, then was scolded by his leader and they argued and the snow white clown was fired. After that, there was a guy who explained about VR lenses. His name was Kim Sun Ju and he was a CEO. He talked with his secretary about his schedule. Then when they got into the CEO's room, he asked Barrow, his AI assistant, to retell his schedule. Mr. Kim then teased her secretary that in the future he wouldn't need a human secretary. Hearing that, her secretary named Yoon took it seriously by replying that she would resign soon. Hearing that, Mr. Kim explained it was just a joke. Then In Song talked about money and job to his friend. Not so long after that, In Song told him that he was in the last step of the job interview in Silver Lining. His friend seemed to underestimate that Insong would be chosen as Silver Linings staff. After that, Mr. Kim was home, his daughter's nanny named Ji Hai seemed to inform someone on the phone that Mr. Kim was home. She then approached Mr. Kim and he asked about his daughter named Mina. Then Mina asked him to read the Snow White story for her. But Mr. Kim told her that he still has things to do and he asked Ji Hai to get him VR earplugs. After that, he went to his working room and there were secret documents. Then his men came and informed him that he already put something in the luggage. He then left, but his gaze to Mr. Kim before he left seemed suspicious. Then a guy came to Mina's room. After that, there was a past scene about a guy who was tortured by someone on the beach. But the one who tortured him told him that he shouldn't die here and if it happened it must be with his permission. He also talked about his money then he gave a paper about ship's crew recruitment. Then he told him to go there tomorrow at 9 a.m. Back to Silver Lining, and Song was about to do the last step of the last step of the recruitment. But suddenly her mother called and he went outside. It turned out he bumped into Jung and Jung's drink spilled on his shirt. Long story short, Jung gave his shirt to him and exchanged it in the toilet, but Jung didn't think it was her fault because she thought it was the guy who bumped into her. During the interview, and Song argued with the interviewer. He also felt that Jung's shirt was so narrow in his body. It turned out the button fell off and directly went into the interviewer's mouth. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim met Bumyang Electronics CEO named Mr. Oh. Mr. Kim wanted to cooperate but Mr. Oh said that he was busy managing his staff. Mr. Kim tried to convince Mr. Oh. He even said Bumyang Electronics from the start always kept up with the time. But Mr. Kim mentioned that some products of Bumyang Electronics were out of date and it would be a good thing if Bumyang Electronics, which was in a bad condition, could cooperate with Silver Lining, the world-class company. Mr. Oh, who was much older than Mr. Kim felt like Mr. Kim tried to teach him. It turned out Mr. Kim mocked Bumyan Electronics. Back to Insong, he was still overthinking about his interview back then. He thought that he had been jobless for 10 years, but he couldn't hold the 10-minute interview. Not so long after that, his landlady came. Then he went outside to talk with her. He said that he would his house contract for two years, but she told him that he couldn't because her son wanted to live in the house. And Song happened to talk with her son named Ji Hoan before he left, he told the little boy that he was lucky because his parents live in Seoul. After that, and Song went outside, then he took a bus. On the bus, he seemed not in a good mood and he looked for an apartment to live in. At the same time, in the different bus there was Young who looked for a part-time job with a high fee. Young then went to Bum Young Hospital. There was someone there who took care of her mother but she seemed irresponsible. Then it was Young's turn to take care of her mother who was sick. But there was a patient beside her mother who talked about her mother and Young. She said that what was the point got a good job but spent it on her mother's treatment. She added that she felt bad for Young. Back to Nsong, he talked with his friend and they both were drunk. 
And Song told him that he needed experience to get a job, but he needed a job to get experience too. His friend then told him that he faced the same thing because he wanted to invest in stocks to get money, but he needed money to invest in stocks. Then and Song seemed still disappointed with the interview and his friend tried to cheer him up. After that his friend asked him whether he got the new apartment or not but it turned out the rent fee was so expensive, his friend offered him to live together but and Song refused it. And Song then told his friend that he got a loan of 50 million won in two years and worried about it but his friend told him to be grateful because they wanted to lend it to and Song. Meanwhile at Bamyan Hospital, Yun just left the hospital but a guy who tortured someone earlier came. He said that Yun got a loan of 50 million and he told her to sell her organs or if she didn't agree with the idea, she could sell something else. At first Yun showed her unhappy expression but then she told him to sell it with a high price. Then the guy took her to a body house, Yun met the pimp and the pimp liked her. The pimp promised her to pay her loan and she said that Yun could earn 30,000 a month. But Yun talked about the expenses for breast surgery, makeup, skin treatment, gown, bag and other stuff. Hearing that, the pimp said that Yun couldn't work here because she would make trouble. Then Yun talked to the guy and he told her to just work in her office, but Yun warned him not to come to her office since she wouldn't run away. Back to Mr. Kim, he was talking to someone on the phone while he was in the basement. Before he got in the car, he seemed to notice something wrong but finally he got in the car. Not so long after that, there was another car in the basement. Back to Nsong, he wanted to go home to meet their parents. He planned to buy something for his parents, at first he wanted to buy food but he knew that they wouldn't be impressed by it. It turned out he bought an AI speaker. His mother was very happy with it, but his father scolded him because Nsong just wasted his money. But it turned out that what Nsong bought was playing his father's favorite song. Meanwhile, Mina seemed to prepare for the camping with his father. After that, there was Mr. O who played golf with some of his colleagues. There was Mr. Kim too along with Young. Young then asked Mr. Kim if she could go to Seoul straight away, but Mr. Kim said it was okay but no overtime pay for her. Hearing that, she was so mad. In the middle of waiting for her father in the camping ground, Mina was called by her father. They talked but suddenly a truck came and her father who was Mr. Kim couldn't hear her because he got a bad signal. The truck then in front of Mr. Kim's car and it went so slow so that Mr. Kim kept having a bad signal. At Insong's home, Insong's father asked Insong to stay with him and help him to farm. Insong thought that it meant he was told to stop his dream to be an actor. Then his father said that Insong just wasted his youth with no decent job. It made Insong mad and he argued with his father. Then he got mad and went outside. After that his mother talked with Insong to give an explanation to him. Back at the camping ground, Mr. Kim's men tried to call Mr. Kim but no response. It made Mina so disappointed and cry. It turned out Mr. Kim changed to a smartphone with only 15% battery left. He asked for help and told the location, then he promised he would give money to the one who helped him. At Insong's home, Insong just woke up. His mother asked whether he got bad dream. But Insong said that he had a really good dream. Because, in his dream he was a CEO. He felt sad because it was not a reality. Hearing that, his father scolded him because he thought Insong's dream made him just woke up. Then his father told him to just take any job opportunities and he chased her. In Song ran away from his father and went to a mountain near his house. His father told him there were many snakes there but it seemed that In Song didn't hear it. In the mountain, he was still waiting for the announcement of the job interview in Silver Lining. But he quickly thought that he wouldn't pass because of the chaotic interview he had. Then when In Song saw a place in the mountain, he remembered his childhood moment with his parents when they went on a picnic there. He happened to promise them that he would be a TV star so that his parents wouldn't have to work. Not so long after that, a snake bit him. Then Insong thought it would be the last moment of his life. Suddenly he remembered bad words from the interviewer, former landlady, previous boss and his father to him. He supposed that they were right and he felt useless to live in this world. But it turned out, Mr. Kim was close to him and asked him to help him first since the battery was 3% left. Insong noticed that it was not his cell phone and the voice was so familiar. Insong told him to call the police but Mr. Kim said that they might cooperate with the police. Then they argued until Mr. Kim was low battery. Before that, Mr. Kim told him to charge the cell phone. Then Insong woke up in the hospital. Luckily, there was no poison from the snake, so Insong was just shocked because the snake bit him. He quickly looked for his phone and noticed it was his phone. After that, he seemed to think that the conversation with Mr. Kim was just a strange dream. But when the nurse checked him, she gave him the cell phone which was Mr. Kim. She said that it was close to Insong. 
At first, Insong didn't realize it, but when the nurse left, he realized that it was not his phone and the phone was able to talk. Then there was a scene when Insong was looking for a job online while he was charging Mr. Kim. When it was full battery, he tried to activate it. But it has a password and he didn't know the password. Then he was shocked because the phone could work itself. Then Mr. Kim introduced himself. Insong surely couldn't believe it. Insong thought it could be remotely controlled or it was such as voice modulation. To make Insong believe him, Mr. Kim transferred 100 million won to him. Then Insong asked to send 1 million won and to be silver lining staff because Mr. Kim asked for help from him. Mr. Kim quickly granted his wish, he told Insong to pretend as CEO, as him. Not so long after that, Insong got a text from the silver lining recruitment manager that he didn't pass. Then there was news on TV about a prediction that AI robots will replace certain jobs. Then, the newscaster says we might even see AI judges in court. After that Insong talked to the food vendor woman. She was surprised to see the newscaster who was supposed to be on the live news but the newscaster was in front of her. Then Insong told her about the news show. He explained that this was an AI newscaster made to look like a computerized newscaster. The woman listened to him and wondered about this increasingly strange world. After that, the newscaster went to the silver lining CEO, who was having lunch. The newscaster thanked Mr. Kim, because he could have lunch when he was supposed to be presenting the noon news. Then the newscaster wanted to invite Mr. Kim to be a guest star on News 9. But Mr. Kim easily declined the offer because he thought that through social media he could easily express his opinions. Hearing that, the newscaster was mad and left. Then there was an song in his room and he talked to Mr. Kim. He wanted to know that the money he sent was real. So Insong tried to get wireless earphones from an online shop. Insong was surprised, happy, and confused at the same time because he could use the money Mr. Kim gave him. He kept thinking about what was happening to him. He thought it was a show or a dream. But Insong tried to convince himself and hoped to do well. Then Mr. Kim asked him to sign a letter of agreement about Insong becoming Silver Lining's CEO. Then he told his parents that he would work at Silver Lining. In another scene, there was a man who was looking for Mr. Kim's phone. Then he immediately told someone at the Bumyang group office through a message that he couldn't find Mr. Kim's phone. After that, Insong said goodbye to his parents because he had to go back to Seoul. But before he left, he transferred some money to his father. Knowing that, his parents were happy and grateful. Insong had just arrived in Seoul, but Mr. Kim told him to buy some suits and other accessories. After that, Insong went to a luxury hotel. How happy Insong was to get facilities and comfort that he had never experienced. Then Insong talked to Mr. Kim about the awkwardness that Mr. Kim felt on the day of the disappearance. He listened to Mr. Kim's story and felt sorry for him. Then the scene moved to Mr. Kim's house. There was Ji Hai, who came to Mr. Sim and asked about Mr. Kim's whereabouts. But Mr. Sim said that there was no information about him. He assumed that Mr. Kim was going abroad on business. Back to Insong, he was getting ready for bed. Before that, he asked Mr. Kim why he was chosen to be the CEO. Mr. Kim said it was because Insong didn't pass Silver Lining's final interview test, which means Insong has no connections within the company. Mr. Kim said that Insong would have a long day, so he should have a proper sleep. The long-awaited day had arrived, and Insong reached the office feeling energized and confident. Mr. Kim warned Insong to memorize a few things. He explained some important people. First, the executive director, Oh Miran, of Bum Young Group. She became the company's head since her father, Oh Bum Gun, got sick. Miran was trying to succeed in a self-driving project. However, the vice chairman, Mr. Oh, didn't want that to happen. Mr. Kim was convinced that Mr. Oh would never be satisfied with his current position. Then Insong arrived at the office. He was surprised to find so many employees greeting him outside. Mr. Kim was monitoring Insong through the wireless earphones he wore. Insong tried to stay calm and firm. He imagined that he was an actor and played as a CEO. Later, Yun led him to the CEO's office. It turned out that Yun recognized Insong, and she said how a job applicant suddenly became a CEO in an instant. But Insong ignored her. He was amazed with everything in the CEO's office. After a while, junior managing director Kwok came to Insong to apologize for his poor attitude during the interview. Then, Kwok asked if he wanted to change the secretary or keep working with her. But Insong decided to ask Mr. Kim first. He went to the toilet and they discussed it. Mr. Kim told him about Young's traits, strengths, and weaknesses. In the end, they chose to keep working with Young. 
Switching to Young's scene, she was in the CEO's room, putting a magazine and a bottle of water on the table. But then she turned around and searched in Sun's bag. Then, In Sung was about to go back to his room, but he bumped into a bucket and fell down. In Sung was about to go back to his room, but he bumped into a bucket and fell down. He argued with the sales team leader because he cursed at the cleaning lady who put the bucket on the street. Suddenly, Young came in and told him that the man he's been cursing at is the new CEO of this company. So that employee was shy. Then In Sung went back to the CEO's room. He immediately connected Mr. Kim's phone to the computer. As Mr. Kim wanted to check if there had been any hacking attempts on the Barrow 4.0 app. While Mr. Kim was operating the computer, and Song wanted to know more about the app. Mr. Kim explained that the app was under development and testing. He gave an example of the fact that Barrow would give the same answer to the same question. Mr. Kim also added that Barrow was not an ordinary multifunctional system but an AI that could think, judge, and speak like Sun Hyung Min, mother, and in Song. So, and Song was getting more interested and curious about the Barrow app but Mr. Kim didn't want him to know more about it. He said the more things in Song found out, the less Mr. Kim would trust him. Elsewhere, Mr. Oh headed to the chairman's office in an angry state. The reason was that he received a message from Mr. Kim, who requested a sabbatical due to health reasons, and he asked for his permission to appoint a new silver lining CEO. Then, they argued. But in the end, the decision remained with Mrs. Miran as the head of Bumyang Group. Back to in Song at the silver lining office. Jung entered his office and gave the list of new secretary names from the junior managing director. She said that the four secretaries would start work tomorrow. But Insong didn't like that. He went to the junior managing director's office. Insong told him that no one would feel betrayed during Insong's time as CEO. In another scene Jung went down to the lobby. She saw the man who came to her at the hospital, and then he was making a mess in the lobby. Then he reassured everyone there that he knew Jung. They both left the office and had a conversation. Then Jung threw the money in the envelope angrily. The man picked it up and told her that she still owed him 50 million. Then Mr. Kim asked In Song why he wanted to work with Jung. He believed that she would become his partner just because she lent him her shirt during the interview. But Mr. Kim wanted In Song to assure him based on accurate data and the probabilities. Then In Song asked how Mr. Kim trusted people based on data and probabilities. He told him that there was 0% of the data and probability of being able to trust Quark's appointees. While they could rely on Young with a comparison of 50 colon 50, so that's why Young is the best choice of others. In Quark's room, he was on the phone with Mr. O. He assured him that Insong was an emotionally driven young man. Mr. O began to feel calm. He intended to destroy Silver Lining and Ms. Miran simultaneously. Insong still couldn't believe he was in this office. Neither Mr. Kim did not expect that Mr. Kim would be stuck on his phone. Then In Song decided to go home as the clock hit 6 p.m. On the way to the elevator, he met Young, who wanted to give him the takeover letter, but In Song refused and left. He arrived at Mr. Kim's house. He was amazed to see such a large house. He came so that Mr. Kim could see Min A. But when In Song wanted to go home, he saw Mr. Sim coming out of Mr. Kim's house. Then Mr. Kim told In Song to follow him. Mr. Kim believed that there was a problem with him. After that, Mr. Sim stopped in a bar. In Song kept following him. How shocked In Song and Mr. Kim were to see Mr. Sim meeting Secretary Young. But Mr. Kim told In Song to go back to Mr. Kim's house to get the documents in his workspace. Mr. Kim tried to show the way to the room, but In Song had to sneak around to avoid being spotted by Ji Hai. In the midst of the tense situation, In Song dropped some decorations, making Ji Hai curious. Luckily, In Song was able to hide. However, Mr. Sim suddenly walked into the room and surprised both In Song and Ji Hai. After a while, Mr. Sim and Ji Hai finally left the room. Meanwhile, In Song was still hiding in the car in Mr. Kim's office. But strangeness occurred when Mr. Kim's phone got a message saying that the phone belongs to someone else. Then there was Mr. Kim's funeral ceremony. Mina looked so sad and Yoon tried to accompany her. There was Omi Ran, the executive director of Bumyang and people seemed to wonder because someone from Bumyang Group attended the funeral. After that they gossiped about her who had a special affair with Mr. Kim back then. Then in a car, there was a scene about Mr. Kim who was asked by Insong. He asked about whether he was the real Mr. Kim since Insong got a text from someone and asked him to return Mr. Kim's cell phone. Mr. Kim tried to assure him. Then Insong asked him about what was the next plan of Mr. Kim but Mr. Kim said to do nothing for a while. Then it turned out that Mr. Kim's plan is tracing an unknown number who posed as him. 
but Insong's laptop is outdated. Also, Insong couldn't trace it from Silver Linings PC because the PC can only operate basic software for security. In the end, Mr. Kim asked Insong to do it in Mr. Kim's office room which is in Mr. Kim's house. Surely Insong refused it because of the earlier incident when he tried to go to Mr. Kim's office room. After that Mr. Kim asked Insong to just live at his house instead. Hearing that, suddenly Insong imagined how he and his parents lived the life at Mr. Kim's house. Then in a restaurant, Insong was drunk and he revealed to Hyun Ho about someone whose soul moved to a smartphone. Hyun Ho didn't believe it and even asked whether it was a new TV drama. After that there was a scene about Secretary Young who remembered her conversation with Mr. Sim. Mr. Sim asked about Mr. Kim and she explained that the last time she met Mr. Kim was at the golf course. Mr. Kim reassured whether she knew where Mr. Kim was at that moment but Secretary Yun said that she didn't know. Back home, Mr. Kim found out that Insong met Hyun Ho. Then Mr. Kim forbade him to have personal meeting during the contract between he and Mr. Kim. After that Mr. Kim said about Insong who had to live at his house soon, he already told Mr. Sim and Ji Hai about it. However, he worried that Insong could get along with the two of them and Mina too. It turned out Insong wore a clown costume again and she asked Secretary Young to be a clown too since Mr. Kim said she could help Insong to be close with Mina. After that, suddenly Young asked whether Insong knew where Mr. Kim was. Insong didn't answer her question because not so long after that Ji Hai came to inform Insong that Mr. Kim's room is ready and she asked Insong to go there. At first Mr. Sim asked Insong why he knew the location of Mr. Kim's room but at the end Insong quickly answered he saw Mr. Sim from the direction. Then Ji Hai showed Insong the direction. After that, Yun asked Mr. Sim whether the one who contacted him was the real Mr. Kim but Mr. Sim was sure about it since he had been working for him for so many years. Back to Ji Hai, after accompanying Insong to get into Mr. Kim's room, she secretly called someone on the phone. Meanwhile, Yun was contacted by Omi Ran, then she met her and she was asked to monitor Insong. Omi Ran also mentioned about the fact that Yun's mother had been in Bumyun Hospital for a long time. Her mother even was moved to the first class in the hospital. The next day, Mr. Kim tried to wake Insong up and he told Insong his idea. Since there was an executive meeting that day, Mr. Kim asked Insong to gather all the cell phones in the meeting then name it, after that Insong called the mysterious number. It turned out that Insong found the cell phone but with no name was ringing while he called the mysterious number. When Insong wanted to find out, Mr. O just came and not so long after that everyone in the meeting took their cell phone already because Mr. O asked them to have a tea time together. After that Insong talked to Mr. Kim about it and Mr. Kim told that it was possible that Mr. O came with the purpose to save the mysterious number. Not so long after that, Yun came to inform Insong that Mr. O wanted to talk with him. Then it turned out the one who didn't put name in the cell phone was Young. She broke the paper with her name and threw it in the trash. Then Insong talked with Mr. O. Mr. O asked about his background and Insong told him that his father was a fruit farmer and the fact that Insong just wanted to find a freelance job in Seoul. Hearing that, Mr. O brought up a topic about the youth these days who didn't want to work hard and just wanted to have an easy job. But Insong said that it was because Mr. O's generation who formed the world was such an unfair place. Then Mr. O said that unfair was the fact Insong who didn't even own a shop but could be a CEO while his children who studied about business early weren't a CEO. Insong was so mad to hear that, because he thought that his children only got privileged since they were kids while Insong did household stuff on his own. After that Insong said that he would make technology with human value and left the room. Then Mr. Kim reminded him that Mr. O is Silver Linings business partner and Insong would meet him often. After that, Mr. Kim asked Insong to check Kwok and Young's cell phone mode. Insong who seemed to believe Young, asked Mr. Kim because he thought they decided to believe her earlier. But Mr. Kim said that she stood close to the cell phones in the meeting. Insong, who was talking with Mr. Kim while walking, was surprised because suddenly there was Young. In the car, Insong tried to ask Mr. Kim whether Young heard their conversation earlier or not by text. But it was his phone instead of Mr. Kim, and Insong mistakenly said it was his phone while there was Young too in the car. Hearing that, Young confirmed whether Insong got two phones, she also asked why he always uses Wi-Fi earphones. She suspected him and thought it was like he had to report to someone. After that she started to push ahead and she threatened him. She thought that Insong kidnapped or even killed Mr. Kim. Then suddenly Mr. Kim found out that the cell phone with no name was Young since he called her. Mr. Kim asked Insong to ask Young why she posed as Mr. Kim, but instead of telling it, Insong said it was impossible because she dared to risk her life. Young noticed Insong talked to someone else on the phone, Young asked about it but suddenly the car, which was already at the edge of a small cliff, fell into it. Meanwhile, Mr. O talked with Kwok. 
It turned out Quok cooperated with Mr. Oh to make Silver Lining worse. Quok said if it happened, it would affect Bum Young Motors and Ms. Oh too. Then Mr. Oh offered him a high position in Silver Lining and he asked his men to have lunch appointment with Insong. Back to Young, finally Insong revealed the truth that Mr. Kim was trapped in his smartphone. At first Young didn't believe it, but Mr. Kim talked with her and she finally believed it. Mr. Kim also mentioned his promise to her earlier. Then there was a scene about Insong who showed Mr. Kim about Mina's video in Mr. Kim's room. Insong took a video of her secretly and suggested Mr. Kim to at least call her. But Mr. Kim said he couldn't explain what really happened to her. Insong agreed with that, and even he thought Young was very confused too at the moment. Then Insong asked about what Mr. Kim promised to Young. At Silver Lining, Insong asked Mr. Kim whether Young would come. Not so long after that, Yoon came and Insong gave one of the wireless earphones since Yoon was part of the team from that day. Yoon had difficulty putting it on and it turned out that Insong helped Yoon to put it on. After that, even Insong wanted to sit beside Yoon in the car. But Yoon reminded him that in the office he was her boss. In the car, Insong asked Yoon about how she usually worked with Mr. Kim. Then Yoon asked the same thing to Insong. He explained he was just an ordinary person who accidentally met a millionaire. Then Young thought that he was just a stranger who couldn't be trusted. Hearing that made Mr. Kim told Young that he couldn't believe her too since when the accident Mr. Kim was with Young and he couldn't remember before and after the accident. Young immediately explained that she wasn't with him at the time. She told Mr. Kim she wanted to go back to Seoul soon because her mother's condition was getting worse. Luckily when she got back from the hospital, her mother's condition just got better. Then in Song checked the text, call and GPS history of Young's phone and it was suitable with what Young said. After that Mr. Kim asked Jung if there was something wrong in the golf course. Jung said that Kwok asked where she wanted to go after accompanying Mr. Kim on the golf course, but she thought that he just wanted to be friendly. Actually Mr. Kim noticed that Kwok is the person who had ambition and he is good at hiding his desires. Mr. Kim then asked to investigate where Kwok goes and who he meets, as well as what he did after went to the golf course. After that, there was a scene about a guy who paid a nurse in the hospital where Nsong was back then. The nurse was asked to take Mr. Kim, the guy wanted to find out which cell phone is it and it turned out he knew it was Mr. Kim's cell phone. Back to Silver Lining, then and Song and Yun started to investigate every detail of Kwok. But it turned out Kwok's phone was ringing when Yun secretly wanted to check about it. Same thing happened when Insong wanted to get into his car, there was an alarm in Kwok's car. Insong noticed that Kwok is a very detailed person. Then Insong planned to check the dashboard camera and Mr. Kim asked them to check it immediately since it was saved only in a short time. Since there would be an appointed lunch with Mr. Oh, Yung had a plan to hit Kwok's car on Kwok's way to the lunch location. Insong offered to call his insurance but it was not a big deal and Kwok refused it. Seeing that, Yung hit his car once again, Insong told Kwok that they would be late and just gave Kwok's car's key to Yung to handle his car. Kwok agreed and finally gave the key to Yung. It turned out they went to the lunch location by taxi. When arrived, Mr. Oh asked Insong to do the press conference because he said the public wanted to know about the new Silver Linings CEO. Then the press asked if the new Silver Linings CEO was a fresh graduate. By Mr. Kim's guidance, Insong said that Mr. Oh started Bum Young Group yet he was just a junior high school graduate and nobody belittled him. Insong added that the age and background were nothing as long as someone had the capability. Meanwhile, Yung checked the dashboard camera of Kwok and checked what Kwok did on June 10th which was the date when Mr. Kim got into an accident. She found that on that day Kwok's car stopped somewhere as if Kwok waited for someone. Back at the press conference, Insong was asked about his opinion because self-driving cars have caused many accidents lately. Under Mr. Kim's guidance, Insong said that there were both self-driving or human accidents. But the machine couldn't get drunk or fall asleep when driving and human accident got higher than the self-driving car. Then he said when people commonly use the carriage as transportation and there was car invention, he was sure that there was a reporter who asked like that too and said the car was dangerous. He added that Silver Lining didn't make technology with worries but securities. Mr. O noticed that Insong was using earphones, then Mr. O put the earphone in a glass of water. Mr. O said to the reporters that they could ask anything from that moment. Meanwhile, Yung found that there was Mr. Kim in the dashboard camera. Then there was a scene about Insong and Yung on the edge of a cliff. Insong asked Mr. Kim what if Yung didn't stand by our side. But Mr. Kim confidently replied that she would be on their side. He told Insong that Yung has no other choice because poverty limits the choices a person can make. Then Insong expressed his curiosity to Mr. Kim about why he chose the name Silver Lining for his company. 
since and Song didn't find the reason in Mr. Kim's interviews. While waiting for Mr. Kim's answer, and Song tried to guess the meaning of silver lining. He said it was either the silvery edge of a cloud or a ray of hope in the midst of misfortune. But he felt that the meaning of the name was not like an IT company name. Instead of answering in Song's question, Mr. Kim asked if Song had ever seen the Terminator movie. But he looked confused and curious. Back to the press conference, one of the reporters asked about the response to the issue that as technology grows, AI will eliminate 47% of current jobs, and some even fear that AI will be out of human control or turn into a threat. However, Insong looks confused and stares at Mr. Kim's cell phone. Suddenly, Insong gave a thumbs up and said that he will be back. People were confused by his act. He's sure they're worried that if the movie Terminator comes true, a technological intelligence with high intelligence and autonomy could be a threat to all homo sapiens. As it becomes smarter and stronger than humans. He said when that happens, AI will change the world in their own favor without human permission. Because humans also do the same thing, wanting to be a ray of hope. He would take over the mission and promise that humanity would be given prominence in the silver lining technology. After answering that, Insong smiled with relief and gave another thumbs up. In another place, there was Mrs. Miran in the car watching the live streaming of Insong's press conference. Meanwhile, Mr. O was stunned by Insong's well-ended press conference. He thanked one of the reporters for a great job. But it turned out that the remark was a satire on his poor performance. Mr. O said he wanted to send his regards to Insong through the reporter. Then Mr. O left him and other reporters there. After that, Insong went to see Mr. O. He expressed his gratitude for the surprise press conference. It made him have a good first impression as Silver Lining CEO. In Song promised to repay Mr. O for this. Rather than feeling happy, Mr. O gets angry at In Song. He felt In Song was threatening him. But the bodyguard and junior manager try to quell Mr. O's anger by saying that many people are watching him. Eventually, Mr. O left In Song in that place. Secretary Young was still inside Kwok's car that was being towed. She looked at the dashboard video footage with curiosity as to why Mr. Kim met Kwok at that time. After exiting the building, Insong talks with Mr. Kim. Insong tried to explain what happened at the press conference. He added that Mr. O had taken his wireless earphones, so he had no choice but to improvise based on what Mr. Kim had said. Mr. Kim appreciates Insong's improvements, which make him look like the real CEO. While he was engrossed in a conversation on Mr. Kim's phone, he suddenly received a call on his own phone. It was Mrs. Miran who was watching him from the balcony. She wanted to invite Insong to talk in the park. Mrs. Miran said both she and Insong have something in common. She said that she heard Insong collecting phones during executive meetings. She also realized that today's phones can also be spies and eavesdroppers. Therefore, Mrs. Miran asked Insong to collect his phones for her secretary. After that they walked around and she expressed her curiosity about the reason why Mr. Kim chose him but I found the answer in your press conference. She asked if he often met Mr. Kim so that he could act like Mr. Kim. He can even say something exactly the same as what Mr. Kim said to her. She said it looked like Mr. Kim wrote the script for Insong. Hearing that, Insong looked nervous because Mrs. Miran warned him not to trust Mr. Kim too much. She told the reason that's because he doesn't care about anyone but himself. She hoped he would accept it as advice from a professional to a beginner. He was confused and hesitant by Mrs. Miran's remarks. After Mrs. Miran left him alone, Mr. Kim asked about what they talked about. Insong said that she gave him advice for his career. Then Insong and his secretary went back to the office. Mr. Kim asked about what Young found in Kwok's car. She said that Kwok met someone near the golf course that day, and the person was Mr. Kim. But he didn't agree and even claimed that they weren't that close. She said that she had a copy of the video. After that they watched the video together. So, Mr. Kim claimed that it was him. Then she said she didn't find anything other than the video. But honestly she found another destination than the golf course. That was Changbuk rebuilding site 3. Yoon tried to look for that place in her maps. In another scene, In Song sat in silence and continued to think about Mrs. Miran's remarks. In the morning, In Song looks at Mr. Kim's phone, which is playing the video that Mr. Yoon gave him. Mr. Kim found it odd that a car was following him when he met Kwok. While In Song was talking to Mr. Kim, Mina came to see him. She says she heard her father's voice. But Insong replies that it's not his father's voice but his voice with someone else. Then Mina was about to leave Insong's room but he stopped her. He showed Mina a magic trick. She was surprised and wanted to know more about that. Then they played together in Mina's room. 
After that they had lunch, but then Song still invited Mina to play guessing games. They went to the backyard and he showed another trick to Mina. In Song's house, there was his father who played the same trick as in Song. He talked to Barrow if he knew some magic tricks. But he said he would learn other tricks if they can make In Song's father happy. He said Barrow was very cute. But just then In Song's mother came to warn her husband to cut the grass. When he came out he found a black car in front of his house. He tried to walk over to the car but it kept moving away. Then Yun arrived at Chungbuk rebuilding site 3. She's still curious why Kwok went to this place after he met Mr. Kim. At the same time, a car arrived. It turned out to be Mrs. Miran. Then the two of them had a conversation. Mrs. Miran said that she was confused about whether to build a stadium or apartments. She added that everyone wants apartments. Then she asked Jung which one she would build. Jung hasn't had time to answer yet. But Mrs. Miran said that In Song wouldn't send his secretary to check the land. So she assumed Jung came there to see her. She told her that In Song had Mr. Kim's phone. She asked that Jung must be as confused as she is. In another corner was Mr. Oh, who was looking at the land as well. Then Yun wondered about who Kwok was meeting with at that time. Mr. Oh and Mrs. Miran walked around and talked about his history with his brother about Bumyang Constructions, Bumyang Electronics, and Bumyang Motors. She is always grateful to her father. Mr. Oh said Bumyang is named after his brother Bum Bum Gun, and from his name Yang from Oh Yang Gun. But Mrs. Miran said that he talked about the past moreover and it was sad that Mr. Oh only had a past to be proud of. He was stunned by her statement. He asked what made Miran feel worthy of being the head of Bumyang Group. They argued about the position of chairman and vice chairman. Then Mrs. Miran became so angry that she splashed dirt on Mr. O's face. He was in pain while Mrs. Miran left him. In Mr. Kim's house, In Song had just finished bathing. Then Mr. Kim thanked him because In Song had invited Mina to play. He said that taking Mina out to play would count as overtime. But In Song said that it wasn't entirely just for Mina but it also refreshed In Song's mind. Then he wanted to take his phone, which was under Mr. Kim's phone. However, it made Mr. Kim's phone fall into the toilet. In Song panicked and tried to pick it up. He tried to dry Mr. Kim's phone with a hair dryer. He deeply regretted his actions. Then Mr. Sim suggested that he get his phone serviced at the Bumyang Electronics Service Center. Ji Hai even suggested buying a new phone. But In Song said that there was something in his phone. But they assumed that it was his ex-girlfriend. Then Mina came to Insong. She asked what happened to him. But suddenly Insong hugged her and he apologized to her. Then he brought Mr. Kim's phone to the Bumyang Electronics Service Center. He was surprised when he entered the room to see a phone service center that looked more like a hospital, complete with appliances, nurses, and doctors. He looked for the cell phone inspection room, which turned out to be at the end. He acted as if he were carrying a human patient who needed to be treated immediately. Likewise with phone service clerks who pretended to be real doctors. In another scene there was Young in the car, she was shocked when Insong said that he had dropped Mr. Kim's phone into the toilet. He told her that the service center needed time to fix the phone. He was afraid that this would get Mr. Kim in trouble. He meant what if they dismantle the phone and something bad happens. He asked Young to say good things about this incident. Before she could answer, she suddenly bumped into a guy who came out of nowhere. Then Insong came out of the car to see him. Likewise, Yung followed and sung out. She was surprised to see that the guy she hit was a debt collector looking for her. When she got out of the car, he matter-of-factly said that she could never run away from him. Yung tried to straighten him out so that he wouldn't misunderstand. She also added that if running away from him was her plan, then she would have quit her job. Knowing that they knew each other, and Song asked who the man was. But instead of answering his question, the guy questioned him. And Song explained that he was her co-worker. The man asked if he was her boyfriend and how did Jung find a loser like him. Then the guy asked Jung if she was looking for a sugar daddy. And Song didn't like seeing that guy suggesting something unkind to Jung. Then the guy said he loaned her 50 million won. He asked if Insong wanted to pay for her. Hearing that, Insong said that he would pay Jung's debt. The guy then gave a business card with his bank account to him. He added that he would wait two days for Insong to pay him. After that, Jung went back to her mother's room at Bumyang Hospital. She took care of her mother. Suddenly, she stopped massaging her mother. She sat down and thought about the conversation with Insong. She explained that even though Insong was the CEO, it didn't mean he was Mr. Kim. But Insong replied that Mr. Kim had told her that Secretary Young was competent and reliable. 
She clarified that she was not that kind of person, she was overwhelmed with her own problems and didn't have time to think about other people's lives. And Song says that if she was busy, she wouldn't help an unemployed person. He assured that she's a good and kind person. Remembering that makes her sad and cry. While In Song chose to go drinking with his best friend, Hyun Ho said that he got the surprising news that Silver Linings CEO is In Song. He expressed his disappointment and thought that they weren't friends. Hearing that, In Song asked for his forgiveness. He tried to explain the chronology, but Hyun Ho interrupted him and said he was a figurehead CEO. In Song agreed with that. Then Hyun Ho said that no one cared about it. After that they went to the pool hall. Hyun Ho asked if In Song was sure about this job and what if he took all the blame and went to jail. In Song replied that it wouldn't happen. But Hyun Ho was okay with that because their lives are hopeless. He affirmed that if he didn't become rich, then he wouldn't mind becoming a criminal. Then In Song added that Hyun Ho shouldn't tell In Song's parents about this. Hyun Ho talked about how his friend had mortgaged his house to buy silver lining stocks. In the end, Hyun Ho's words made In Song think too much. In Song even dreamed about what if In Song had to take responsibility for the mistakes that Mr. Kim had made. In Song dreamed of seeing Hyun Ho becoming a priest who seemed to bless the people who had mortgaged their apartments to buy stocks. After that, In Song was picked up by Kwok to meet the press in front of the office. Then In Song came into his car with Young. He woke up from his nightmare. Then he remembered Hyun Ho's words about the friend who mortgaged his house to buy silver lining stock and also his promise during the press conference that he would show technology with human value. After that, he went to look for economy books. He said he would be a real CEO during his time as CEO. He read books and marks important things. At the fitness center, Mr. O was working out. Then his secretary said that he found a phone under Mr. Kim's name at Bumyang Electronics and Song repaired the phone with a letter of authorization. Mr. O wanted to know that his secretary chose someone who can fix Mr. Kim's phone. After that, and Song picked up Mr. Kim's cell phone at the service station. Then he left the building and tried to talk to Mr. Kim. He asked if he died from drowning in the toilet. He didn't realize that people were watching him. Then Mr. Kim replied that and Song had made the same mistake again. Hearing that, and Song interrupted him because he was happy that the phone was running again. When and Song returned to his room, he met Young. She asked if Mr. Kim's phone was fixed. In Song replied that his phone was working fine. Mr. Kim said that they didn't have much time because they had wasted it. He said that he found something odd in Kwok's dashcam footage and there was a car following Mr. Kim when he met Kwok. The weird thing is that the car turned around when found out Mr. Kim wasn't with him anymore. They wondered if the car followed Mr. Kim or if it got lost. So, they had to check the license plate number to make sure it was accurate. In Song told him that he wanted to investigate the license number of the car. Then In Song approached his neighbor, who works at the police station. He wanted to ask about the owner of the car. But it turned out that the neighbor was busy. When he said goodbye, his neighbor took him out. In another scene Yoon didn't believe that In Song could handle it. Then she went to the receptionist of the golf course. She acted as if she was the secretary of the person who had the reservation at the golf course. She asked the receptionist to charge her phone but through the computer. Back to Insong, when the police saw Insong's car, he was surprised because the car was nice and looked expensive. He looked at the details of the car and found a small scratch on the back. Then he asked how Insong got that scratch. Hearing the question, Insong immediately looked for an excuse. He said he had been hit and run by someone. The police asked why Insong didn't tell him about it. Then Insong said that he knew the license plate number. Then he invited Insong to immediately find out the owner of that car. After that Insong told his secretary and Mr. Kim that he had tracked the license number but it turned out to be a fake number. Mr. Kim said the person that they were facing wasn't an ordinary person. Then Insong wanted to know if he saw the car following him that night. Mr. Kim said that he checked the CCTV recordings and that car was following him. Then they went to the crime scene on Mr. Kim's advice. They were shocked and confused about whether to climb to reach the crime scene. But Mr. Kim said they should do that. Finally, they arrived at the crime scene. They thought that if someone had attacked Mr. Kim, they must not have been alone. It was because a guy wouldn't be able to bring his body down from that place. Suddenly there were two people headed to that place. But those are Insong's parents. Then his parents invited them to have dinner together. Insong's father asked him if there were co-workers. Then he replied that Yung is his supervisor. They went together in front of Insong's house. When she saw the food that Insong's mother served, Yung remembered her mother, who made her bibimbap. 
she recalled the memories with her mother and it made her cry. And Song tried to find out the reason that made her cry, but his mother forbade him. Then they ate dinner together. After that they said goodbye to his parents. In the car they talked to Mr. Kim. He told In Song and Yung to find the car immediately. In Song said it was as if they had gone back to the beginning. But at least they knew that the car's number was fake. In Song suddenly said maybe that car was following him at that time. They realized that the car was behind them. Then In Song stopped at the parking lot and hoped that the car would stop there. In Song and Yung pretended that they didn't know the car had been following them. Then they left the car and tried to find out who was in that car. They were surprised that it was Nam, the leader of the sales team. Apparently Nam followed Mr. Kim whenever he went. Nam also followed In Song everywhere, even when In Song wanted to meet Mr. Oh. Then In Song tried to convince Nam that the car with license number 4885 belonged to Nam. Bu Nam said In Song shouldn't know that. From another corner, there were four armed guys who were ready to finish In Song and Young. Then In Song asked Young to get into his car. After that when Insong was about to fight the four guys, he imagined that Insong was Fedora Emelianenko or Bruce Lee so he could fight those guys. Then Insong and Yung ran to his car. But before Insong and Yung entered the car, Yung was caught by one of the guys. Insong tried to fight them, but he couldn't. Unexpectedly, Insong, Yung, the four thugs, and Nam saw a car driving towards them. Yung shouted for help while Insong ran towards the car that had just arrived. Song and Yung didn't know that it was the man who loaned Yung 50 million. Then In Song negotiated that this guy would fight four men for In Song and Yung. In Song paid him with his expensive watch. The man got out of his car and saw the condition of his car's glass and lights, which were damaged by one of Nam's thugs. Then Nam asked the man who had just arrived. The loan man said that Yung owed him money, and he wouldn't let her go until she paid off the debt. The loan man easily defeated four thugs. He almost lost when he fought Nam, but In Song and Yung helped the lone man. After that, In Song, Yung, and the lone man brought Nam somewhere. In Song and Yung asked Nam about who instructed Nam to follow In Song and Yung. But Nam said it was Mr. Kim who instructed Nam. In Song and Yung were shocked to hear Nam's statement. Back in the 90s, there was a scene about a little boy who hit his friend really hard, and the boy's mother got angry and told the teacher to punish him. The teacher told him to come to the cliff across from school every day after school starting tomorrow, then went and left candy for him. Back to the present, In Song, Yung and Ma Pai was in the same car, they were talking about why Mr. Nam was also here and he said he was sent by Mr. Kim, after that Ma Pai tried to ask Mr. Nam why he came there and followed them, Mr. Kim who was in the smartphone said to In Song that was not true and just a trap, he was still in the smartphone in In Song's pocket. In Song then asked why Mr. Kim ordered him, Mr. Nam said because Mr. Kim was very suspicious, and Mr. Kim may kick In Song if he didn't do things like his expectations. Then Yung said that it didn't make sense, because if so it meant Mr. Kim made the trap on the golf course or himself. After that Mr. Nam said he followed Mr. Kwok not Mr. Kim, he said he would take In Song and Yung to the one who sent him if he was released. Then the police came because they received a report that there was a fight, they went to the police station to provide information. On the other hand, at a hospital, Chairman O, his brother and daughter were shocked and felt very sad about that. It was so heartbreaking for them. At the same time at the police station they heard the news that leader Chairman O's had passed away after three months of fainting from a heart attack, then Mr. Kim ordered his secretary to return to the office and look for information about Mr. Nam and suggested in Song to go to Chairman O's funeral, but on the other hand he was afraid of losing track of Mr. Nam the attacker, he did not know who was behind Mr. Nam and when he could be free. While the two of them were doing their job, In Song had an idea who could stay at the police to keep an eye on Mr. Nam so that Mr. Nam couldn't go anywhere if he could get away from the police station. It turned out that person was his friend, Hyun Ho. In Song immediately called Hyun Ho and said that there was a spy in his company and he didn't know when he would be released, so he had to keep an eye on him. In Song said that Hyun Ho was a shareholder of his company so it was about saving the company and his money also, Hyun Ho agreed to watch Mr. Nam and told In Song to quickly go to the cemetery using his motorbike. At the funeral home, the reporters asked who will replace Chairman O to become the next chairman of the company. Therefore the shareholders would hold a meeting to choose the next leader. Yung kept trying to find dead about Mr. Nam and his background in the office, at the same time at the police station, Mr. Nam admitted that he was only a victim and showed his wounds, he asked to call the police chief who could get him out. Then there was a guy who came suddenly to the room at the police, Mr. Nam immediately smiled. On the other hand, In Song met Mrs. Moran. She thanked Insong for coming, because there were lots of people here who only wanted to see what they wanted to see, not mourn. 
Mrs. Miran asked Insong if he had heard from Mr. Kim about Barrel 4.0, and Song said that Silver Lining were still doing tests for it, but he said that a Silver Lining CEO shouldn't answer that way. After that Mrs. Miran was not sure if they had the same mission because they only wore the same identity, suddenly Mr. O came, Mr. O asked why the two of them were here while the funeral was taking place. Mrs. Miran said Insong just told her that Mr. Kim couldn't come and apologized about that, and then Insong left. Mr. O spoke to Mrs. Miran, if only her older brother had written down who would be the successor to his company. Mrs. Miran said she should die too after all the people who were close with her died. Mr. O said to Mrs. Miran he thought about her advice to him and would soon hold a year-end meeting with shareholders and directors to choose the next leader. In fact Mrs. Miran is the biggest shareholder in Bum Young Group, but Mr. O said it was only when her father was still alive and he had spoken to the board of directors. Then Mr. O left after saying that. On the other hand Insong called his mother and his mother said what was wrong because she was worried and knew that Insong was sad, but Insong said it was okay and sometimes things could happen. Then he questioned whether the path he was taking was right or not, his mother advised in the end it was better to choose the path we wanted than to regret. Meanwhile, Hyun Ho followed Mr. Nam, who managed to get out of the police to the subway, and Song also followed him to the subway station, but it turned out that Mr. Nam got out of the train without their knowledge and was found by Insong. But there, Insong helped a mother whose child's pram had fallen down the stairs and immediately caught the pram, and because of that she lost track of Mr. Nam. Suddenly Mr. Kim was angry because he interfered in other people's affairs and lost Mr. Nam. Insong told him that it was his decision. On the other hand, Mr. Kim's secretary continued to look for Mr. Nam's identity and visited the house that was suspected of being Mr. Nam's house. She found letters who were addressed to Mr. Nam in the house's mailbox, and there she met Insong too. In Song decided to find a bodyguard who could do anything to defend them, he needed someone who could follow without being found out, who could always on their side and do anything at all costs and he found the right person for it, he is Ma Pai. In Song, Yung and Ma Pai visited a house that was known to belong to Mr. Nam, but thanks to the Ma Pai's dexterity, they found out that the house was not Mr. Nam's house. After that, the three of them visited where illegal cell phones were sold to find out Mr. Nam's identity through his cell phone, but could not be traced, and also they visited Mr. Nam's schools to ask for Mr. Nam's data, trying to persuade some staff there to reveal about Mr. Nam's data in that school. From a distance Mopai saw that there was a data file on the shelf and it was 2012, which was the year Mr. Nam went to school. Because that was what Insong and Young were looking for, Mopai took it and gave those folders to Insong and Young. After tracing everything, it turned out that Mr. Nam used fake data from the number, school and place of residence. From all the data, no one was found close to Mr. Nam, Mr. Nam didn't have any friends at all also and Insong said how come someone like him could be a team leader? Then Mr. Kim said he would try to find through the office's data server about Mr. Nam. At the office, Insong's parents came. They wanted to meet him while bringing some food for him, but they were immediately directed to the CEO's room and shocked. They didn't know Insong's position in the office, they suspected that Insong was summoned by the CEO for doing something wrong. In his room, Insong was confused about how to explain to his parents that he was the CEO, there was no way he had to explain that he found a cell phone with someone in it, and gave that person's company to him. Then his secretary helped Insong and she claimed to be the CEO, and Insong acted as Young's secretary in front of his parents. On the way home, Insong's father was touched by his son's life at the moment, having an adequate work desk, a nice office made him live like a human, and was better than those who only do gardening every day. Mr. Kim continued to investigate Mr. Nam's background. Based on everything in the data, Mr. Nam couldn't be alone, Mr. Nam must be assisted by someone behind him. Then Insong and the others went camping with Minae because it was her birthday. They camp on the beach, they made a bonfire and grilled some meat to eat. Then Minae slept in her tent, and after that Yun went out to get some air and thought something about her mother because she received a call earlier. She talked to Insong about their lives. Insong was playing an impromptu movie, and Yun told him about her dreams that made them laugh at each other. After that Minae woke up and walked, unknowingly Minae heard Insong talking to her father through the smartphone with the earphones that Insong left behind, Minae cried hearing her father's voice. Then there was a one year ago scene about Minae's birthday she looked sad looking at her birthday cake, her nanny came and was surprised because Minae was still awake, she said her father would be home early in the morning, Minae said her father would come on her birthday even though it was late, the nanny agreed to Minae's words and then left. Sure enough, her father came, he said he wanted to come earlier but couldn't, Minae said she knew because every Monday was the day her father updated Barrow 4.0. Because the day was almost over, Minae immediately prayed and blew out the candles without having to sing the birthday song. 
Her father asked what Mene asked for during prayer, she said it was a secret, and in the end Mene said she hoped her father would come on time on his birthday next year. Her father also gave her a gift, but Mene asked for a gift from her mother first, a letter she gave. It turned out that when her mother was in the hospital she wrote many letters for Mene for her birthday until later when she will go to university. That letter would always be there for the most important moment in Mene's life. Back at the camp, Mine woke up because of the Insome's earphones, apparently with that Mine listened to Mr. Kim, Mine's father, conversation with Insome. She cried and asked where her father was and why he didn't come for her birthday. Her father apologized, Mine thought that it was because she always asked her father to read fairy tales for her then her father promised he would never leave Mine. After that, Mrs. Mi Ran was visited by students who wanted to interview her for their newsletter. They asked what was her secret to being the first entrepreneur for three consecutive years, she said actually she was embarrassed if there were questions about this because on the other hand ordinary people had to try hard to reach this point but she had lived with wealth since birth, so to reduce feelings it's a shame she worked so hard to get to this point in her current position. When she returned to Seoul after college, her father gave her a business card and it was her first business card. At the office, Young and Insong continued to investigate Mr. Nam's background, to the social media of Silver Lining employees, Mr. Kim only found Mr. Nam was always in the cafeteria based on the office's CCTV history. And he also participated in several office clubs, but according to Young, he was just entering the name, nothing related. But on the other hand Mr. Kim got data that Mr. Nam not only entered his name to club members for free, he even took part in club events. Climb and came to the events. After that, In Song met Mr. Kwok accompanied by Ma Pai. Mr. Kwok said he had never seen Ma Pai before, and Song also told him that he was the bodyguard and driver he recruited recently. Then Yun proceeded to find Mr. Nam's identity through the leader of the climbing club. He said he had indeed seen Mr. Nam there once. Yun asked if Mr. Nam has ever talked to anyone there. He said no, he never said anything, he didn't have had dinner together either. Meanwhile, there was In Song and Mr. Kwok attended a ceremony held by the Dragon Group, Mrs. Miran wanted to say something and called and Song to come along. She continued that she said Bumyang Motors and Silver Lining would launch the Barrow 4.0 self-driving vehicle on October 3rd. She told and Song to just prepare everything before the 3rd and she would take care of the rest. Back to Young who was still finding out about Mr. Nam, she didn't understand why Mr. Nam joined the climbing club, but Mr. Kim said there was a pattern in the dates that Mr. Nam joined. After that, at the ceremony location, Mr. Kwok was told by Mr. Oh that Mrs. Miran deliberately stole the point in the stock battle by launching the self-driving vehicle before the shareholders meeting. Mr. Oh said they couldn't run Barrow 4.0 without Mr. Kim and it's impossible. Mr. Kim told Young that there was a pattern in the dates, that was when the report on the results of the beta version of Barrow 4.0 testing came out. Young thought that Mr. Nam gave reports to other people using the club as a cover, Mr. Kim said that it was just an assumption, they could really meet naturally and use the climbing club as a reason as there are no CCTVs on the mountain. Young found that whenever Mr. Nam was present at the climbing club, Kwok was also there. Then and Song returned to the office and received a text and invitation from Mr. Kwok to eat ramen together, then he told Mr. Kwok he should treat him to lunch sooner because Mr. Kwok had worked hard to hire talented people. In Song asked where Mr. Nam was, which made Mr. Kwok surprised, and then he asked who. He added that he couldn't possibly know the whereabouts of every employee because Silver Lining wasn't a small place. In Song said Mr. Nam appeared only when Kwok joined the climbing club, but Kwok said that he didn't know and didn't remember when he went climbing. Then In Song warned Kwok to think carefully because In Song had heard some things from Mr. Nam. But Kwok said that he didn't know and he was not comfortable when In Song attacked him without any proof. After that, there was a scene in the Kwok rooms, Kwok called his wife and children who were in New York. He said he missed them and his daughter said that she wanted to buy concert tickets. Kwok told them to just buy what they wanted because he was an executive member of the Bumyang group. After that, In Song told Young that Kwok insisted he didn't know anything about Mr. Nam. He needed something conclusive about it. Mopai suggested to do violence to get Kwok to confess, but Young didn't agree. The three of them then had dinner together at a restaurant. Yun was uncomfortable with Ma Pai and left. After that Insong chased after her but Yun said she couldn't be the one who easily forgives and returns to normal and she left. Insong told Mr. Kim that he couldn't do it anymore, but Mr. Kim said that Insong could finish everything, not him. Since Yun and Ma Pai left, he invited his friend, Hyun Ho to come to the restaurant because he ordered a lot of food. Hyun Ho said that Insong was friendlier since he became CEO. Hyun Ho asked how Mr. Nam was doing now, and Song said he was still looking for him, and he told Hyun Ho that being a CEO was not easy. 
The boss always put pressure on him and the employees always fought all the time. Then Hyun Ho suggested him buying the shares of Bumyun Motors, instead of having to be tired of making money. After that Insom received a message that informed that he got salary already, Hyun Ho was surprised to see his nominal salary was so big. And at the same time there was a scene where Insom and Hyun Ho had a conversation when they worked in the same place, he said his first salary he would use to buy a set of premium beef for his parents. On the payday they really bought an expensive Korean beef set, but immediately the bill appeared on their cell phone screen and finally they couldn't buy the meat. In another scene, Yun was in a hospital where her mother was being treated, she told her mother's caregiver that she had sent her salary, but she asked to raise her salary and Yun was confused because the balance in her account was insufficient. In Song suddenly came to the hospital and apologized for acting so casually before. He regretted it after Yun left and understood because he also had someone he didn't want to forgive and couldn't. Yun told In Song that her mother worked hard to take care of her, but now she was sick and could rest. Yun remembered when she received the opportunity to become a hotelier, but at the same time her mother fell ill, so she looked for a job that would pay her a high salary immediately and gave up with her dream. Yun told In Song about that moment because thanks to him, Yun remembered her dream even if only for a moment. After that, Mr. Oh received a report from his assistant while he was exercising. His shares in Bumyun Motors were increasing, he thought that this would make his nephew the next leader if the shareholders meeting was held at the end of this year. Knowing this, he thought that he must immediately meet In Song as soon as possible. Then In Song arrived home with Mopai, he asked that what he could call him because he didn't know his name, and a man who lived in the CEO's house said just call him Mopai because Mopai used to be a former national youth boxer but now Mopai had been three times entering the jail and was a lone shark. Mopai threatened to at least keep quiet if he didn't want to be the reason for Mopai entering the jail for the fourth time. Mine came out and approached Mopai and asked how he made bubbles out of his candy, Mopai just stayed quiet and took Mine's snacks then left, then Mine said she was not afraid because she looked like her friend who was always like that too, and the teacher said her friend liked Mine. After that, Mr. Kim told Insong to come to a VR seminar in Daejeon, Insong asked if he could visit his parents while going there and Mr. Kim agreed. Insong also went to Daejeon and visited his parents' house with Mopai as a driver. He also gave Mopai a watch and a shirt for Young. In Song also brought some stuff for his parents. He also bought AR glasses for his father, high-tech glasses with Barrow that could impress him. Meanwhile Mr. Kim called him and thanked him because In Song gave the VR goggles to his parents, he got the idea to make Kwok confess. In Song invited Kwok to eat and drink at the Sky Lounge, he tricked Kwok that the lift was broken and asked him to just climb the stairs to the top. That was done so that Kwok was tired and fell asleep as per Mr. Kim's plan. Arriving at the top, In Song asked him to return to the office because the break was over, while exhausted, Kwok followed him again. And finally, Kwok fell asleep in the car, and immediately replaced Kwok's glasses with VR glasses. He saw Mr. Kim because of those VR glasses, then Mr. Kim asked what Kwok was doing to Mr. Nam and then Kwok told him that he did that because someone asked him to do those things. In Song recorded what Kwok told and he asked Kwok where Mr. Nam was at the moment. Kwok still tried to distract that and told In Song that he didn't know anything. After Insom left, Kwok called someone and said that Insom seemed to know everything, he wanted to meet them personally because he didn't believe them anymore. After that, when in office, Yung asked if Kwok would act as predicted. Mr. Kim said that Kwok must be prioritized. If he was cornered, he would prioritize his safety and made agreements with other people for his safety. He would be definitely contacted. Suddenly Mr. O called Insom and wanted to meet, they met in Mr. O's room. He said that Mrs. Miran released Barrow 4.02 soon to attract media attention, even though Mr. Kim wasn't ready for it. Mr. O said that Insong wouldn't be on Mrs. Miran's side or him, as if Mr. O was trying to threaten him. Meanwhile, Kwok visited the room with Mr. Nam's name there. Kwok was scared and in a rush, he called Insong and wanted to tell the truth of everything. He asked Insong to come alone, but when Insong came he saw Kwok's car filled with smoke and he died in his car. Suddenly, Insong was framed for killing Kwok because the police suddenly came and arrested him, then there was a scene about Minae who teased Insong because she thought that Insong loved Young. Insong denied it and Minae quickly asked Yun something that made Insong nervous. But at the end Minae just asked if Yun knew Insong's favorite color was pink. After that, back to the scene where Kwok called Insong on the payphone. Kwok told him that he would reveal the truth but Insong had to come alone. After Kwok was done, he headed to somewhere by his car. But on his way, there was a truck and there was no signal exactly like what happened to Mr. Kim before the accident. It turned out Insong came to the location that Kwok told with Young and Mopai. But the rest were waiting in the car. 
In the parking lot, Insong saw Kwok in his car filled with smoke, and Song then panicked and tried to save Kwok. Not so long after that the police came and arrested Insong as if there was someone who called the police first. Knowing that, Yun wanted to go there but Mopai forbade her because Mopai thought if the police knew that there was Mopai, it would be complicated. Not so long after that, Mr. Kim texted Young, he asked Young to go back to the office in case Mr. Kim and Insong needed help outside the police office. At the police office, Insong was interrogated by the police. The police said that someone reported there was smoke in the parking lot and they found Insong the CEO. Then Insong said that he thought it wasn't suicidal since Kwok was burned by coal briquettes. Insong assumed that someone framed this as if it was suicidal. The police then cornered him because he thought it was not suicidal too and that was why they arrested Insong. Moreover, besides Kwok who died, the team leader was missed and no news about Mr. Kim. After that, the police questioned if Mr. Kim had real health problems. Not so long after that, someone came. It turned out to be someone from Bumyang Group. Then Insong got into a car and he found Mr. O. Oh. It turned out Insong was saved by Bumyang's attorney. Insong questioned why Mr. O oh helped him, but Mr. O oh said that he just wanted to save the boss of Bumyang's subsidiary from the silly case. Hearing that made Insong mad, since Kwok was very loyal to Mr. O. Oh. In the end, Mr. O oh noticed that Insong had an appointment with Kwok in the incident location. He even noticed that they must have wanted to talk about something that couldn't be done in the office. Mr. O added that Kwok was a diligent and quite ambitious worker. Yet he was easily influenced too. After that Mr. O even threatened Insong if he wasn't on Mr. O's side, and Song could risk his own life. Then Mr. O asked Insong to tell someone who ordered Insong to stop so that Mr. O would stop too. Back at the office, Insong seemed not so fit. Yung asked about his condition and she was sure that he must be shocked. Then Mr. Kim played the news that said the police confirmed that Kwok did a suicidal. Insong told Mr. Kim and Yun about the fact that the police thought that it was not a suicidal too. Then Insong brought up the topic about Mr. O who warned them but they still did it, and Insong said that because of himself Kwok died. Then Insong asked Yun who would be the next victim. At first, Insong said that it would be himself, but in the end he thought it was impossible and it could be his parents. Hearing that, Mr. Kim offered Insong 2 billion, but Insong left the room after that. Then there was Mrs. Miran who asked Yun about the baseball match. In the match, the player lost because he was in doubt for a while before running to the next base. Mrs. Miran said if the player was in doubt, he should have stayed in the previous base instead. If he wanted to go to the next base, he had to be fully sure about it. After that, Mrs. Miran asked Jung to give her the next base while Mrs. Miran gave a flash disk. In exchange, Mrs. Miran promised that Jung's mother could still stay at the first class of the Bumyang's hospital. It turned out and Song came back to his parents' house. He helped his parents do gardening. But his father scolded him because his father thought and Song easily gave up when he faced hardship. In the office, there was a worker who was angry because of and Song's absence but Yung said that and Song was on leave because of the earlier incident. Then Yung asked Mr. Kim whether she had to go to his parents' house, but Mr. Kim told her not to since and Song refused his 2 billion offering already. Then Mr. Kim asked Yung to prepare a vacancy for the CEO position instead. After that Yung was on PC and she found the folder of Barrow 4.0. Back to Insong's homeland, Insong ate the leftover beef and he got drunk with his mother. His mother asked the reason why he quitted, Insong revealed the truth, but because his mother was drunk, she only laughed. At Mr. Kim's house, Ji Hai talked to someone on the phone as usual. She informed that Insong seemed not to go home again, after that she asked that person to meet up. Before she left, Mopai saw her. In Insong's house, Insong woke up and remembered what he said last night to his mother. He quickly talked to his mother but his mother said that she didn't remember anything because she was drunk. But when Insong was in the toilet, his mother told her husband too about someone who was trapped in a cell phone which was Mr. Kim. His parents then agreed to take Insong to the doctor. But it turned out that Insong's mother went to a witch doctor and the witch said that there was an accursed spirit. In the garden, Insong's father asked what was wrong in Insong's job, and he asked whether he lost his patience again like when he acted in the past. So back to the past, at first, Insong's father came to see Insong's acting when Insong played in a theater and he was proud of him. But his father got a call from Insong's mother and he went outside. After that, he accidentally heard Insong's conversation with his friends. The conversation situation was chaotic because Insong revealed that CEO Han, who dominates the theater industry as well as film and drama business, touched a girl named Ji Yun. His friend then warned Insong that may be unable to work in the theater industry because of it. 
Hearing that, Insong told him that telling the truth was better than working in the theater industry. Then in his home, his mother asked his reason for quitting the theater but he just said it was not suitable for him. It turned out what his friend said was true, he was in an acting audition, even though one of the judges said he was good but they couldn't choose him since he had a problem with CEO Han. Back to the present, and Songs admitted that he knew about the incident in the past. He even said he was proud having a son like him, then he left. After that, and Song threw rubbish but he found a mineral bottle that reminded her of Minae and suddenly he remembered that she had a sports event the next day. In Mr. Kim's house, Minae asked Jin why and Song didn't come to her house again, Yun explained to her that he was busy but Minae looked so disappointed and said that Insong and her father were the same. The next day, Minae was still mad and she didn't want to go to school. Ji Hai tried to persuade her but she wasn't successful. But not so long after that, Insong came and they went to the sports event along with Yun even they won the event. After that, Insong talked with Mr. Kim Mr. Kim told Insong that Insong had to do the contract until it finished. Well, it seemed that what his father said made him want to come back. He even said he didn't come back because of money. Mr. Kim answered that he knew it, because people could do anything because of money, but money was not the only thing that made people do anything. And Mr. Kim added that Mr. Kim learned it from Insong. Then Insong went outside and talked with Young. Young asked the reason why he came back and he explained, he added that because there was Young who was ten times kinder than the head maid. After that, Insong asked the same to Young, since Young could be in a dangerous position too. Then Yung told him about the agreement between Mr. Kim and her. So back to the past, Yung saw a woman who did the demo of VR technology. The woman hugged her virtual mother which was fake since her mother had passed away. Seeing that, Yung asked Mr. Kim if Silver Lining could simulate anyone in VR technology. Mr. Kim noticed that Yung wanted to do it in case her mother's death was in the near future, so he asked her to gather the recording, video, and photo of her mother. Back to the present, Yoon felt like she was stupid because the VR technology was not real anyway. Moreover, she thought it was useless since her mother couldn't talk to her at the moment. But Insong said that it was not stupid and he could understand her. Insong then said that if only her mother could talk, there would be many things her mother talked about, like she was proud to have a daughter like her. Meanwhile, Mr. Oh was informed that Insong came back. Hearing that, Mr. Oh asked his men to throw Insong. Back to Silver Lining, Insong along with Young and Mr. Kim investigated why they knew about Insong and Kwok's appointment back then. It turned out after Kwok called him, Insong got a call again that promised Insong to tell the truth and they made an appointment too. Insong thought that he was Kwok too, but Young thought it could be someone else who recalled and checked who Kwok called. Then Mr. Kim told them that they needed to check the number first. After that, Insong and Mopai went to Yongbo since Yun traced that Kwok called from a payphone in Yongbo area. But, they didn't find anything wrong and CCTVs were only in the parks, no CCTV near payphones. Mopai tried to ask the CCTV in a cafe there but the staff said that it was fake. Before leaving, Insong noticed that there was a street musician there. Back to Silver Lining's office, Young and Insong looked so desperate, but finally missed her. Kim found which payphone it was. Mr. Kim managed to find it because Kwok appeared on the singer's video. They even found out that someone who recalled Insong was Mr. No which was Mr. O's driver. Back to the scene where Kwok was so shocked seeing Mr. Nam's condition. After that he met Mr. No and asked why he didn't tell Kwok about Mr. Nam's condition. But MR.NO said that there was no need to tell him and MR.NO just did things as ordered. Kwok was so scared and asked if he could be like Mr. Nam's condition too but MR.NO said that he expected Kwok didn't have to be the same condition as Kwok. But after that Mr. No saw him calling from the payphone, then MR.NO checked who Kwok called and he found out that it was in Seoul. Then Mr. No drove Mr. O and Mr. O asked about Insong and asked MR.NO to keep an eye on him and to investigate why Insong looked so obsessed with his earphones during the press conference as if he followed someone's word from the phone. After that, Insong followed Mr. No, Insong then straight talked that he got evidence that could make MR.NO go to jail. Then it seemed that Mr. No wanted to do harm to Insong, but Mopai quickly came and MR.NO ran away. Mopai and Insong chased him, but it turned out MR.NO pointed a gun at them in the end. Emmer.no threatened Insong to just keep quiet if he wanted to be safe. Emmer.no took Mr. Kim in the cell phone's form too because he noticed that Insong talked with someone on the phone even in a situation like that. When Yung knew it, Yung thought that it meant Mr. Kim was kidnapped. But it turned out, it was his plan so that Mr. Kim could know who he talked to, where he went and who was behind him. Then there were Mr. Kim and Miran signed the agreement at Bumyang office one year ago. Miran thanked Mr. Kim for being willing to work with Bumyang. 
Mr. Kim said he didn't just trust because Mr. Kim knew Bum Young was Silver Linings' best partner. Miran said that Mr. Kim was still the same as before, separating personal and work matters. Miran said she would be professional. After that, back to the scene wherein Sung and his bodyguard chased Mr. No, Mr. Oh's secretary and No took Mr. Kim's phone from In Sung's hand. Then In Sung told Young about Mr. Kim's phone being stolen by Mr. No. Young was shocked to hear that. But In Sung said that it was part of Mr. Kim's plan. Mr. Kim said that it was a good opportunity because he could see directly from the enemy's place. Mr. Kim also said that he looked like a normal phone in front of the enemy's eyes. Yoon was furious after she found out. She said In Sung should have stopped Mr. Kim's plan because it was very dangerous. At first, Yoon wanted to call the police. But In Sung stopped her because he knew that the police were being affected by Bum Young Group. Besides, In Sung wanted to get solid evidence about the person who was behind Mr. Kim's disappearance. After that, In Sung and Young went back to Mr. Kim's house. They thought about the situation that Mr. Kim was facing at that time. Yoon tried to find out by listening through the wireless headset connected to Mr. Kim's phone. Yoon was surprised to hear gunshots. Then In Sung tried to listen to the sound which turned out to be a gunshot from the game. Yoon was annoyed at In Sung's explanation. She said how could the man who stole Mr. Kim's phone was playing games when his identity had been revealed. In Sung replied to Young, he said that Mr. No was unlike Nam who ran away and hid because No knew the crime he committed was perfectly planned. Then Young asked if Mr. Kim's phone ran out of power or if Mr. No turned off Mr. Kim's phone before Mr. Kim found any evidence. Then In Song said that Mr. Kim and he had planned for something in case anything bad happened. In another scene, Mr. No was about to turn off Mr. Kim's phone. But Mr. Kim's phone kept getting messages so Mr. No decided not to turn off the phone. That made Mr. No charge Mr. Kim's phone instead of turning it off. In Song came late to the office the next day. On his way to the CEO's office, he met Young. In Song said that this morning Mr. Kim called and explained that everything went well. Young said that she was glad to hear that. In Song said that Young shouldn't worry about Mr. Kim because Mr. Kim is a smart person. But Young clarified that she wasn't worried about Mr. Kim but she was worried about In Song. Then suddenly junior managing director, Mr. Kim came over to In Song and Young. He asked In Song for approval to disband the AR Glasses team. In Song thought the glasses were working perfectly. But the junior managing director explained that they failed to get Series B glasses investment from VCs in Singapore therefore In Song must decide whether to disband the team or apply for additional funds to Bum Young Group. In Song had to make a decision the next day before the meeting with the head office. In Song was surprised to hear this because Mr. Kim's phone had not returned to In Song's hand. Before In Song decided on the AR glasses team, Young explained that the AR glasses project involved 400 employees. Jung added that maintaining a low-margin business would endanger silver lining. In Song was confused and surprised to hear Young's explanation. Then In Song called Mr. Kim to discuss the AR Glasses team dissolution. But before In Song could explain, Mr. Kim hung up the phone. Then Mr. No took Mr. Kim's phone to a phone repair shop to unlock the password. In Song and Young were in the office. In Song said that he envied Mr. Kim who always had a choice. But at the moment In Song had a choice that could determine a person's life and the future of the company as CEO was silver lining. Then Yung said she read a book once while accompanying Mr. Kim in a golf meeting, the book said a pro's ball rolls according to plan, but an amateur's ball will roll according to his worries. Yung explained that In Song needed a plan instead of worries. Emmer.no took Mr. Kim's phone from the phone repair shop. But the technician said that there was a security program on the phone so he couldn't open it. At the same time In Song got a call from Mr. Kim who said that MR.NL was going to the BY Hotel. Then Young, In Song, and Ma Pai went to the BY Hotel. Young said that those who could enter the BY Hotel lounge were the ones who had gotten Mr. O's permission. That meant Mr. O and MR.NL were talking about something important. They arrived at BY Hotel, In Song and Young heard the conversation between Mr. O and Mr. No through the wireless headset connected to Mr. Kim's phone. In Song heard that Mr. O and Mr. No were waiting for someone. But Mr. O cancelled the meeting. Suddenly Young took Ma Pai's phone, Young suspected that Ma Pai was working with Mr. O. But it turned out that Young and In Song were wrong because Ma Pai didn't send a message to Mr. O but texted Mina. When they arrived at Mr. Kim's house, In Song invited Ma Pai to have dinner together. In Song apologized for suspecting Ma Pai. Then In Song asked when did Ma Pai exchange numbers with Mina. Instead of answering In Song's question, Ma Pai asked if Mina didn't have a mother. Then In Song replied that Mina's mother died when Mina was a child. 
When Insong had dinner with Mopai, Insong asked about Mopai's watch. Then Mopai said that the watch had been sold. Insong asked if Mopai spent the money to buy an apartment or something like that. But Mopai didn't answer him. Instead, Mopai remembered his youth practicing boxing in the building that he lived in at the moment. He wanted to be a member of the boxing team. But during the match, he lost because his rival gave bribe money to Mopai's coach. Since then Mopai abandoned his intention to become a member of the national boxing team. Meanwhile, back to Mr. O who was at the BY hotel. The man that Mr. O had been waiting for finally arrived. At the same time in Song was about to sleep but he was still confused about the decision he had to choose for the AR Glasses team. When Insong arrived at the office, he met Mr. Kim, director. Mr. Kim asked if Insong decided on the AR Glasses team. Insong didn't have time to answer. Mr. Kim added that the meeting would start in one hour and Miran also attended the meeting. Mr. Kim told Insong to not make a fool of himself. Jung interrupted Mr. Kim's conversation with Insong. Jung told Mr. Kim to wait for Insong in the meeting room because Insong would explain his decision. Jung gave an idea of what if Insong postponed the meeting for a few days with the excuse of being sick. Instead of answering, Insong said that he had already seen the greatness of AR glasses. Jung replied that the company didn't find a business item that could make a profit from AR glasses. Insong asked whether there was a way to save Silver Lining and the subcontractors. Then Insong's mother suddenly called, and she asked Insong to buy her a new TV. But his mother couldn't see the size of the broken TV. Insong said he would buy a TV for his mother later. After that Insong attended the meeting. He said he didn't want to disband the AR Glasses team. He wanted to expand his business. The people who attended the meeting were surprised to hear Insong's statement. They explained that the Glasses business was losing money, so Insong should have disbanded the AR Glasses team. Insong explained that online sales were booming. Shoppers were coming to offline stores just to see the products directly. Insong also added that the challenge of online shopping was that shoppers could not see the products in person, so silver lining glasses would be the solution. Insong explained that shoppers could see the items they were going to buy just by wearing AR glasses. Shoppers could see images that looked alive created by the glasses. Insong believed that AR glasses will be sold and many people will need the glasses. Miran doubted Insong's statement. But Insong tried to convince Miran. Insong said that the world had changed and so must investors. So far, investors only cared about successful businesses but were unwilling to care about businesses with high risks. Insong explained that Bumyang and Silver Lining dared to take risks for a change. Insong believed the AR glasses would be a profitable project for Silver Lining and Bumyang Group. Then Miran and the business partners who attended the meeting agreed with Insong's decision to continue the AR glasses business. After the meeting ended, Insong received congratulations from Mr. Kim, director. In addition, Yoon said that she was relieved by Insong's decision. Yoon thought that Insong got the command to continue the AR Glasses project from CEO Kim. However, Insong clearly stated that he was not given an instruction by Mr. Kim but Insong made a decision based on his thoughts. After that, Insong returned to Mr. Kim's house. Insong continued to read and study economics through Mr. Kim's books. In another scene, at Insong's house, Insong's mother managed to unlock Insong's favorite suitcase and then she put the amulet into the suitcase. While focusing on studying, Insong got a call from Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim told the suspect of Kwok's murder. Then the next day Insong barged into Mr. O's meeting room who was holding a meeting. Insong explained that he also attended the meeting. Insong discussed Kwok's death. Mr. O said that the police decided that Kwok's death was a suicide. Insong denied Mr. O's statement. Insong said that it was a murder case that was ruled as a suicide. Insong believed that someone killed Kwok and then the suspect framed Insong. Then Insong added that the killer of Kwok was in Mr. O's meeting room. The people in the meeting room wanted to get out of the room but they couldn't because the room was locked. Outside of the meeting room, Young and Mopai tried to distract Mr. O's employees. Back to Insong in the meeting room, Mr. O said that Insong should go to the police station to handle the Kwok death case instead of going to Mr. O's office. Mr. O asked Insong if Mr. O was also included in the list of murderers. Then Insong stated firmly that Mr. O was the main suspect in the Kwok murder case. The scene returned to the moment when Mr. Kim called Insong in the study room last night. Mr. Kim said that Mr. O had a secret document that Mr. Kim was looking for. Then Insong asked if Mr. O caused Kwok's death. CEO Kim said that Insong could ask Mr. O about Kwok's death but Insong had to get the secret document first. Mr. Kim recommended Insong look for the secret document in Mr. O's office first. 
Mr. Kim shared a plan for Insung to sneak into Mr. O's office. Insung's plan is to distract Mr. O's employees. Then Yung and Mopai looked for documents. Finally, in Song, Yung and Mopai carried out Mr. Kim's instructions to sneak into Mr. O's office when Mr. O was in a meeting. Yung and Mopai looked for a secret document in Mr. O's room. Meanwhile, in Song stalled for time to keep Mr. O in the meeting room. But in Song couldn't keep Mr. O in the meeting room any longer because Mr. O's staff opened the meeting room door. Then in Song informed Yung that Mr. O was heading to his room. Yung was confused because Yung and Mopai hadn't found the secret document yet. Then Insong got the idea to delay so that Mr. O wouldn't easily get to his room. Insong lit a lighter and brought the lighter closer to the exhaust in the meeting room, so the fire alarm went off. Soon Yung and Mopai find the secret document that Mr. Kim referred to. Mr. O arrived at his room. He sensed that something had happened in the room because he saw books and items on his desk in a mess. Yung and Mopai managed to get out of Mr. O's room through a hole in the roof. Then Mr. O informed Mr. No that Insong acted strangely. Mr. O ordered No to find out the reason behind In Song's strange actions. Then there was Miran in her office. Miran heard about the incident in Mr. O's office. One of Miran's employees said that the incident happened because of In Song's actions. The employee said that the agenda for the meeting at that time was who killed Kwok. Miran remained silent as she listened to her employee's explanation. In Song and Young were curious about the contents of Mr. Kim's secret document. In Song said that Detective Choi gave the document to Mr. O. Yung assumed that Mr. O found the document in Kwok's car. Then In Song opened the envelope of the secret document, which turned out to be the beta test results of Barrow 4.0. Then In Song received a call from Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim said that Mr. No continued the mission. Mr. Kim asked In Song to follow the location of Mr. Kim's phone so that In Song and Young could catch the suspects on the spot. In Song and Young followed Mr. Kim's directions to Mpyong Mental Hospital. Then Mr. Kim shared a video that showed Mr. No entering the patient's room. It turned out that in the patient's room, there was Nam who died. After that, Mr. No went to another patient's room but No did not show the patient's face. In another scene, Mr. O invited Miran to dinner. Mr. O asked if Miran killed Kwok just like Miran killed Mr. Kim. But Miran told him that she didn't kill either of them. She also mentioned that Mr. Kim was still alive. Then No accidentally pointed Mr. Kim's phone at the patient's face and it appeared to be an unconscious Mr. Kim. In Song was shocked to see a video of Mr. Kim being laid out in Mpyong Mental Hospital. Then there was a scene 10 years ago when Mrs. Miran and his father were talking in his father's room. Mrs. Miran said she would take over the subsidiary but her father said that he wanted Mrs. Miran to take over the baseball team, then her brother would take over the company. Miran didn't agree but her younger brother was still in college and she thought that she also got the skills to take over the company. His father just said not to fight, because everyone had different abilities. After that, Miran was on the baseball field, a bodyguard approached her and said that her younger brother had died, Miran immediately ordered him to prepare the car then the bodyguard left. After that, Miran was silent as she looked at her ID card which was written as CEO O Miran. After that, in Song, Yung and Mopai were going to the hospital in a speeding car to see Mr. Kim who was still lying in the Mpyong Mental Hospital. There was a bodyguard accompanying him, the bodyguard told the nurse to take care of Mr. Kim. Once there, and Song was prevented from entering by the guards and nurses there, they said the visiting time was over. Mopai came to help and finally and Song could enter, followed by Young and Mopai who managed to enter. They ran but when they got to their room, Mr. Kim was not in his bed, it turned out that Mr. Kim was taken by the bodyguards who guarded him to the ambulance and tried to leave, they ran to catch up with the car and followed the ambulance. With the help of the GPS on Mr. Kim's cell phone, they tried to trace where they took Mr. Kim. They managed to get to the ambulance but it turned out to be no one who took Mr. Kim, Mr. Kim's cell phone was left on purpose in a different car to trick them. On the other hand, back to the scene when Mr. O asked if Mrs. Moran killed Kwok like she killed Mr. Kim, but Mrs. Moran said no then she said that Mr. Kim was still alive. After that she wondered why he needed to die while the one who criticized the launch of Barrow 4.0, Mr. O, is still alive. Mr. O said that the Barrow 4.0 project had indeed failed and Kwok had a beta version of Barrow 4.0. Mr. O said Miran should stay out of the way and enjoy life at ease. After that, Yung and Insong talked to Mr. Kim whose soul was still in the cell phone, Insong asked if it was really Mr. Kim's body and he said yes, and at the moment his soul was still in the cell phone, in other words he was trapped inside. Yung said at least Mr. Kim had found his body to return to. Mr. Kim said he was still confused because he wondered why he was still allowed to live, 
Yun replied because he was still useful to them even though Yun didn't know what for. Therefore they had to try to find Mr. Kim's body, but it was ineffective to tell the hospital or nursing home because they were too many. In Song also said he would meet Mr. O and told Young to check the Enpyeong Mental Hospital with Ma Pai. Young asked why Insong met with Mr. O. When Insong left, Young asked Mr. Kim if they should let Insong go, Mr. Kim told Young to just trust him because Insong thought that they couldn't have gotten to this point without Insong. Then Young tried to ask about where Mr. Kim was taken, but the hospital authorities didn't want to tell her, they said it was patient data that shouldn't be shared. Ma Pai helped to threaten the hospital director there but ended up with the arrival of the security guards who stopped Ma Pai. On the other hand, In Song was at Mr. O's office to meet Mr. O but he met the bodyguard who brought Mr. Kim the previous day. In Song said he would send the video of Mr. O who was wearing a respirator in room 301 to the police. The bodyguard said if he sent that to the police, the respirator would be removed. The bodyguard then asked In Song to choose between making the bodyguard a kidnapper or a killer. After that, In Song returned to his office and told Young that they must be confused and surprised to know that In Song knew their hiding place to keep Mr. Kim's body. In Song thought they would act rashly if In Song along with Young and Ma Pai continued to investigate in a rigorous way. Then Young thought that they had to be quiet and In Song agreed. After that, In Song asked what Young and Ma Pai got at the Mpyeong Mental Hospital, soon Ma Pai handed over the director's ID, which could be used for hospital access too. It turned out that while at the hospital Ma Pai deliberately caused a scene and Yung took advantage of that moment to take action by taking the hospital director's ID card. Yung would try to find the identity of the hospital director who was also a doctor there. After that, In Song got a call from Hyun Ho who told him that In Song's mother told him to take In Song home, then they left by car. Arriving at In Song's house, it turned out that his mother was holding an exorcism, In Song didn't want to take part in the ceremony but Mr. Kim said they had arrived and it was better to try to join. Soon In Song agreed and took part in the exorcism ceremony. While holding the cell phone which was Mr. Kim, the exorcist said this spirit was unusual and it would kill In Song. In Song's mother panicked and paid much money for an amulet. But it turned out that the exorcism lied, Mr. Kim heard that and scared them into fear. On the other side of the office, Ma Pai told Young that it was true that a doctor was the director of the hospital. But Young found something odd because from the day that this doctor had killed and made malpractice mistakes but he could be a hospital director. Yun supposed that there must be someone inside who helped him. And it turned out that the victim of malpractice was the son of the former leader of Bum Yang O Bum Gun namely O Sun Wan. Back to In Song's house. In Song and Hyun Ho said goodbye, In Song told his mother to stop believing in superstitions and just go back to church. In the car In Song told Hyun Ho that he was upset if his mother believed in shamans and amulets, but Hyun Ho reminded that In Song had said that his mother was superstitious because of In Song, when In Song was little he once suddenly played a movie after his mother had a good dream about In Song's future would be good. And when In Song was young he was chosen to be the lead in an independent film, after a fortune teller said there would be good luck for him. Therefore his mother believed in superstitious things. Back to the present, at home, In Song's mother cried because she regretted why she gave the exorcist so much money, and it couldn't be returned. After that, when he got home, In Song apologized to Mr. Kim for what happened that day. But Mr. Kim said it was okay because he was the one who decided to give it a try, he thought that maybe he would get out of the phone and back into his body. In Song asked Mr. Kim believed him, in fact he found a document saying that Barrow 4.0 was a failure. Mr. Kim said it was because this technology ignored human intelligence and acted on its own. Then there was a scene when Mr. Kim tested Barrow 4.0, he turned the car around in an illegal place where it shouldn't be, therefore it was concluded that this artificial intelligence technology would decide based on his own will. In Song asked if it meant that this artificial intelligence had feelings, Mr. Kim said some people may perceive it that way, but as a developer it was just a fatal mistake for Mr. Kim. In Song asked again if Mr. Kim had spoken to Mrs. Moran and Mr. Oh, but Mr. Kim forgot about what happened before Monday when he was still in his body, so Mr. Kim wasn't sure what his final decision would be then. But based on Insong's experience and Mr. Kim's vision, he believed Mr. Kim had already told them because Mr. Kim would not care about the power of the Bum Young group. Therefore Mr. Kim gave Kwok the trial report of Barrow 4.0 Beta because he was on Mr. O's side. On the other hand at that time, Mr. Kim was with Mrs. Miran and talking about Beta 4.0, Mr. Kim said that he had found a fatal bug in Barrow 4.0. Mr. Kim said they should postpone the release date of Barrow 4.0. But Mrs. Miran didn't want it postponed, it would be a loss for her. Then Mr. Kim said he would fix it all and then left Mrs. Miran. Back to the present, Mrs. Miran received a call from Young, she said she was waiting for Young to call her. 
Meanwhile at Mr. Kim's house, In Song and Ma Pai were getting ready to go to the office but Ji Hai asked them to have breakfast first. At the dining table Min asked why In Song came home late last night, and Song said he visited his hometown. Min told In Song as well as Ma Pai that they had to promise not to go missing again, and they promised Min At the office, Yun seemed to be in a hurry, she came to In Song's room and copied Barrow 4.0 data. In Song and Ma Pai came and apologized to Yun that they were late because they had breakfast first. In Song asked Yun if something happened but Yun said nothing happened then In Song and Ma Pai intended to continue their work. Suddenly Yun said that Mrs. Miran actually contacted her, she had long persuaded Yun after Mr. Kim's departure to provide Barrow 4.0 data and at the moment Yun's mother suddenly disappeared in the hospital. It turned out that Mrs. Miran was no longer persuading her but threatening her, Yun also asked In Song for help with that. After that, In Song visited Mr. O's office and met the guard again before he reached Mr. O's room. The guard said whether the threat was not clear, and Song firmly replied he was sure the guard would not remove Mr. Kim's respirator because the guard would have done it from the start. In Song smiled and rushed to Mr. O's room. In Mr. O's room, In Song told Mr. O that Mr. Kim gave Kwok a barrel 4.0 report so he could give it to Mr. O. Mr. O asked if that meant Mr. Kim wanted him to be the next chairman. But In Song said no, Mr. Kim was not happy with the fact that Barrow 4.0 had bugs. On the other hand, Yun met Mrs. Miran and said that she didn't bring Barrow 4.0. She brought new information that In Song had found Mr. Kim's body. Yun said Mrs. Miran didn't seem surprised and already knew it all. Mrs. Miran just looked at Yun seriously. Back to In Song and Mr. O. In Song said there was a problem when sending Barrow 4.0 because Kwok changed his mind. Because if Kwok had not changed his mind, Mr. O would have already known that it was a failure and In Song thought that Mr. O wouldn't let Mrs. Miran lying to Mr. O like Mr. O was doing at the moment. Mr. O found out about it all after Kwok died. After that, Mr. Miran told Young that it was true that he knew it all. And there was a scene where Mr. Kim gave Kwok a Barrow 4.0 report and ordered him to give it to Mr. O secretly. But he gave it to Mrs. Miran after making a copy first. In Song made a deal with Mr. O to hold a shareholder meeting to fire Mrs. Miran and Mr. O could become the next chairman. And once Mrs. Miran was out of office, she would be able to get a fair trial. Yun also cornered Mrs. Miran and told Miran to give Mr. Kim's body to her, Miran agreed as long as Yun wanted her mother to die. Surely Yun didn't want it. But Yun said to Miran that she was not someone who wanted her family to die. Then Yun told Mrs. Miran to respond whether she wanted to give Mr. Kim's body or not. At the hospital, Ma Pai had saved Yun's mother. Meanwhile, In Song told Mr. O that he and Mr. Kim were soul mates, because Mr. O asked what their relationship was, that was why In Song answered. It turned out that before that Ma Pai had installed a tracking device on Yun's mother's bed, therefore he was able to save and find Yun's mother, Yun thanked Mappy because her mother was safe. Then there was a scene about In Song who was playing with arrows with Men A. There was Ma Pai too in the room but not so long after that he left the room and went outside. Suddenly Ma Pai remembered the first time he met Minnie and he was so unfriendly with her. At that time Minnie asked her to smile, so as he remembered it he tried to smile but it looked like a scary smile and even In Song asked what he was doing because he seemed to get a toothache. After that in front of Chungbuk nursing home, Yun cried and In Song came after that. Yun tried to hide her tears but she couldn't stop crying. After that, she told him that when she was in junior high school she heard her mother crying at night. Yun knew it because it was not easy to raise Yun alone without a spouse. She added that as she grew older, she knew what the feeling was, so she had grown with hiding tears because she didn't want her mother to know her struggle. But lately, her mind changed because she met In Song, she regretted that she should have more communicative with her mother. In Song then tried to hug her to calm her but not so long after that, Yun kissed him and In Song's parents watched them from afar but quickly left. At Mr. Kim's house, Mr. Kim asked if Yun and In Song had a problem since both of them didn't talk, but they confirmed that nothing happened. After that, Mr. Kim asked her to stay in his house since the nursing home was far from silver lining and she agreed. It made both Young and In Song happy after the kissing moment earlier. At Mr. Kim's room, Mr. Kim understood that In Song hadn't been this close. In Song was a bit surprised and confirmed, then Mr. Kim said close to 2 billion and In Song was relieved. Mr. Kim thought that right when Mrs. Miran was fired and no longer the shareholder, they could investigate her fairly. Meanwhile, someone talked to Mrs. Miran by phone and informed Mr. Kim's plan, she also told Mrs. Miran if she wanted to cancel that, she had to give Mr. Kim's body to her. Then in the general meeting of shareholders, there was the firing vote of Mrs. Miran. 
Surprisingly, the result was the firing request was declined. So before, eventually Mr. O had talked about this to Mrs. Moran. He revealed the fact that Insalm came to talk with him and offered an interesting offer. But he thought about Barrow 4.0 which they just released and they thought it was a failed product, he didn't want to be the executive director of the collapsed throne. Back at the general meeting, Mrs. Miran also requested to fire Insung because she said as CEO he was negligent, and it turned out the result was accepted. The interim CEO was Mr. Kim the managing director, while Mr. Kim and Insung found ways to make Insung the CEO again, he asked Jim to keep being the secretary. Meanwhile, Mr. No came to Mrs. Miran, he told her that Mr. O asked him to order a flight to America and a house there. Then Mrs. Miran thought that she would relocate her to the America branch. After that Mr. No brought up a topic about the public who was skeptical about Silver Linings automatic self-driving, then he offered her that he would do something for Mr. O. But Mrs. Miran thought that she would be the most suspected in the situation. Then Mrs. Miran talked about baseball, where people don't have to win in every round, the most important thing is who would win in the end. Then Mrs. Miran asked how far he could do for her. Then there was a past scene about Mr. No when he was in the military. He was being accused of corruption and his boss didn't admit that he did it too along with Mr. No. Emmer.nl was asked to do the thumbprint as his confession. Suddenly Mrs. Miran came and she noticed that it was wrong that a captain did corruption alone. She tried to influence him to be loyal only to the right people. Mr. No didn't know Mrs. Miran at that time, he tried to reach for his gun but Mrs. Miran quickly grabbed his gun first. Back to the present, at Mr. Kim's house Ji Hai told Insong that Min A wasn't excited lately because Insong got fired and Mr. Kim didn't come back. People started to talk about his father who maybe got a serious illness or had a love affair abroad so that he didn't come back in a situation like this. Insong quickly went to Min A's room but Min A's was not there. Then Insong and Ma Pai went outside to look for Min A. Insong couldn't find her in her school, but CCTV recorded her going outside in the morning. Finally, Ma Pai found her who was being scolded by a mini market staff because she stole a pie there. Then she was taken to a playground. In Song tried to talk with her and she told that she wanted to be in jail so that his father could come and see her. She said that she really missed her father. Then Ma Pai looked so hollow and went to the toilet, and he remembered the book which asked about self that he read when camping. At Mr. Kim's house, In Song asked Mr. Kim's condition and Mr. Kim said that he was so angry with himself but he could do nothing. He felt useless exactly like when his baby girl was born, yet he lost his loved one. Then in song suggested Mr. Kim told her the truth someday. Back at Mr. O, he asked Mr. No if Insong did something but Mr. No said nothing suspicious. Mr. O thought it was strange and he didn't know whether he wanted his position as CEO back. But he said that he knew how to drop the image of someone who is unpredictable. At Mr. Kim's house, Insong said he didn't know Ma Pai since he left without telling him where he was about to go. Then Inseong accompanied her until the gate because Young wanted to go to work. But outside, there were many reporters who asked if Insong assaulted an employee by turning on a sprinkler because he didn't like the meaning. The other reporter even wanted to confirm whether Insong was temperamental or not. The news quickly spread with rumor that Insong may harm Mr. Kim so that Insong could get the CEO position, it was even watched by Min A and Insong's parents. Not so long after that, in Insong's house there were reporters who asked his father about Insong. At Mr. Kim's room, Insong felt it was his mistake, but Mr. Kim said it was not his fault and what Mr. Kim and Insong should do was planning something. Not so long after that, Yoon called Isong to inform that there was restructuring in Silver Lining. Yoon assumed that Bum Young wanted to take over all Silver Lining's technology along with the staff. Mr. Kim added that after they released Barrow 4.0, they would obey it without fixing the bugs. Same thing would happen with another Silver Lining's product and Mr. Kim should do something to prevent it. Meanwhile, suddenly Ma Pai attacked the doctor earlier named John Beck and Ma Pai hit him with a golf stick and then he punched him in the boxing ring. When Ma Pai revealed he knew many things about the guy including his family and threatened he would do something to his family, John Beck admitted that he was someone who took care of Mr. Kim and reassured that he was alive. Mr. Kim was in a remote place instead of a big hospital. He also informed Ma Pai that they were looking for a peaceful nursing home or mental hospital like his hospital. After that he kicked John Beck until he couldn't do anything then Ma Pai tied and locked him. After Ma Pai went to the hospital to check one by one, he didn't find Mr. Kim. Then the rumor was getting more viral, even Hyun Ho watched a video that talked about it and mentioned Kwok who did suicidal. At Mr. Kim's room, In Song got a text from her mother, she asked about his condition and she told him that she would be at his side. Not so long after that, Min A came to the room and asked whether it was true. 
At first and Song thought Min Ain talked about the rumor, but it turned out she asked about another video. So before, a cleaning service that Insong happened to help named Young Sil, told Young that she wanted to help Insong. Then Young did a live video in Silver Lining account, Young Sil told the public that Insong used his authority to help her and at that time she just found out that Insong was the new CEO. She decided to tell this although she knew it would be hard for her too because nobody did this to her who was just a cleaning service. Mr. O noticed it and asked MR.NO to contact Mr. Kim the interim CEO. Not so long after that there were some staff who wanted to stop the live video. But Mr. Kim, the interim CEO, came to continue the live video. He told the public about Insong who suggested a new profit model for the AR Silver Lining Glasses project that was about to be cancelled before. As a result, the project was accepted in 32 countries and Insong helped Silver Lining as well as the 400 subcontractors. He added that in his eyes Insong was a nice guy and a good CEO and Insong was more suitable to be in the CEO position than himself. The situation was getting better because there was news that reported a woman who happened to be helped by Insong, because Insong helped her baby. All that happened made the public sympathize with Insong. As many amateur investors were increasing, they started to buy Silver Lining share, including Hyun Ho and Insong's parents. They asked to make Insong the CEO again. At Mr. Kim's room, Mr. Kim said that even himself couldn't believe anyone when he got problem, but Insong had people who were willing to help him. Then Yun came to inform them that there would be a meeting to rediscuss about Insong's firing. Hearing that, Mr. Kim said that Insong was not a good CEO, but Insong was the CEO that people wanted. At Bumyang, Mrs. Miran came to Mr. O's room and she was angry with him. She asked why he did that and she told that his way was so old-fashioned because anyone could be the press at the moment. Back at Mr. Kim's house, Yun congratulated Insong because he would be back as CEO and she said his dream came true. But Insong said that his dream was being an actor, then Yun asked why he stopped to reach his dream and Insong said that he didn't stop but he just refrained from it and let the time that would finish it. Then Yun said she didn't fully agree with people who said time would heal all wounds. Because she thought time wouldn't finish by itself, people just had to face the pain alone as the time passed until it was unable to be felt. Yun expected that it wouldn't happen to his dream. Meanwhile, Mopai went to the Psychoanalysis Association. He went to the toilet first, he saw a guy who stopped him in the mental hospital earlier and he started to follow the guy. After that, the nurse informed someone by phone that Mopai came to take Mr. Kim, some nurses tried to stop them but Mopai managed to take Mr. Kim by ambulance in the end. Then he drove in a rush, he tried to call Young but no answer because she was in the meeting with Insong and finally he called Mr. Kim's house and informed Ji Hai to tell Insong that he found Mr. Kim and he asked Insong to meet him in the gymnasium. When Ji Hai asked which gymnasium, he didn't tell her because Insong already knew where it was. Then Ma Pai arrived at the gymnasium and saved Mr. Kim, when he checked Zhang Beck he disappeared. He checked some places in the gymnasium but he found some guys who looked like a gangster, quickly he fought them. After finished, he wanted to save Mr. Kim but it turned out Mr. No along with his men came and asked him to give Mr. Kim back. So, while the public was welcoming Insong back to be CEO, Ma Pai fought with Mr. No's men. He was overwhelmed this time even he remembered when he was a boxer back then. When he saw that they took Mr. Kim, he lost focus and finally fainted. Meanwhile, Yun just activated her phone when Mopai just fainted and she just found out that Mopai found Mr. Kim. Mr. No was still in the gymnasium and tried to ask him but Mopai attacked him even though Mopai was dying. Emmer.no looked so mad. Then and Song and Yun headed to the gymnasium but when they arrived they found Mopai was covered in blood and died. Then there was a past scene when Mopai bought something in a mini market. He heard a conversation between a daughter and her father, and quickly Mopai bought a pie too. And after that back to the scene where they found Mopai dead in the gymnasium, they found the chocolate pie that he bought. Then they buried Mopai in a forest. It turned out that Mopai's real name was Jang Jusong. They already found out after he died. There was Ji Hai too, she put the book that Mopai read earlier, she said that from the moment Mopai could read the book as much as he liked. Before leaving, the police who happened to interrogate and song named Detective Choi came. At Mr. Kim's house, Young and Ji Hai came home and Mr. Sim greeted them. Then Young gave the chocolate pie to Minae and told her it was from Ma Pai. Minae quickly assumed that Ma Pai was too ashamed to give by himself and she said Ma Pai looked like her classmate named Ha Sung. After Minae left, Young said to Mr. Sim that for some people Ma Pai was a good person. Meanwhile, Detective Choi gave Ma Pai's note and he told and song that he seemed to be going to some hospitals. Detective Choi assumed that he looked for someone who was Mr. Kim. Then the detective said that he thought Insong got rid of Mr. Kim because of Bum Young's order and Insong would get the CEO position for that. But when the detective knew the fact Insong was fired, 
He assumed that Insong was not part of them or they abandoned Insong. Hearing that, Mr. Kim told Insong to be careful since Detective Choi was maybe investigating Insong. After that Detective Choi asked if Insong had things to say to the detective, but Insong felt like no needed to say anything since the detective may be Bamyang's spy. Detective Choi quickly said that he was not the spy. Then Insong brought up topic about Kwok's death which the police decided a suicidal case and the police gave Barrow 4.0 report to the vice chairman. Again, Detective Choi said that it wasn't him. Then there was a past scene when Detective Choi gave the secret document that he found in Kwok's car to Mr. Oh. Detective Choi made sure if Mr. Oh didn't kill him and the detective said that for him the case was unfinished yet. Back to the present, Detective Choi said there were cases like the death case like Kwok and Mop I before and he revealed that he had been a long time investigated Bum Young. After that Detective Choi gave the file about it and he asked Insong to contact him in case Insong changed his mind. At Mr. Kim's house, while Insong checked the file, Young came and Insong told her that Detective Choi wanted to cooperate with him. Then Yun asked if the detective had found who killed Ma Pai, Yun suggested to inspect Mr. No, but Insong thought it was impossible Ma Pai died just because of Mr. No. Then Insong brought up a topic about Ma Pai who texted him and informed him that information had been leaked. And the only one who knew about the information was Ji Hai. Then there was a past scene when Insong played hide and seek with Mene and he hid in the kitchen. Not so long after that, he heard Ji Hai talking to someone on the phone and sounded so suspicious. At Silver Lining, Insong met Yang Sil then he asked her name and she quickly told him. After that, he thanked her because she made him back to be the CEO again. Then Mr. Kim congratulated him too because this time Insong was being the CEO because of himself. Not so long after that, Mrs. Miran came, Insong directly said that he knew who killed Ma Pai. Then Mrs. Miran asked what was the relationship between Insong and Mr. Kim, since she never knew about Insong in Mr. Kim's life before. Then she threatened that she may kill him or his parents. But soon Mr. Kim activated a loudspeaker and he talked to Mrs. Miran. He said that she knew Mr. Kim but Mr. Kim didn't know her and that was why these incidents happened. Hearing that, Mrs. Miran was so scared and wondered where the voice came from. Then she left quickly. It turned out she came to see Mr. Kim's body to make sure that he was really Mr. Kim. She asked Mr. No if Mr. Kim was not awake yet and he confirmed it. Then there was a past scene about Kwok who gave the secret document to Mrs. Miran, Kwok said that Mr. Kim asked him to give it to Mr. O. Oh. After that Mrs. Miran seemed to ask Mr. O oh to kill Mr. Kim by truck. Mr. No then stopped Mr. Kim, and there were Mr. No's men too. They asked Mr. Kim to come with them. But soon Mr. Kim ran away, they chased him but before Mr. Kim got caught, Mr. Kim seemed to have done something to his phone and hit his phone somewhere. When they wanted to take Mr. Kim, he opposed them, which made him fall and hit a big rock. It turned out that Mr. Kim got a diffuse axonal injury that made him unconscious. Mrs. Miran knew it when John Beck told her by phone. Then Mr. No talked to her and apologized because it was his mistake. He wanted to be responsible for it so that he seemed to want to make Mr. Kim die but Mrs. Miran stopped her as she read an email from Mr. Kim. At the end, he wrote gold will shine, iron will rust. It made Mrs. Miran was sure that the one who sent it was the real Mr. Kim since he often said that quote. Back to the present, Mrs. Miran felt worried because she didn't know how much Mr. Kim had prepared. It made Mrs. Miran ask Mr. No to keep waiting until she found out what he exactly had. After that, Mr. No tried to influence her that Mr. Kim had nothing and just kill him since they could find Mr. Kim's body. But Mrs. Miran wanted to use Mr. Kim's body as a joker card. At Mr. Kim's home, Insong asked Mr. Kim why Mr. Kim talked to her. But Mr. Kim said he had to do it so Mrs. Miran worried because she didn't know what Insong and Mr. Kim had. Mr. Kim tried to make Mrs. Miran believe that there was someone who commanded Insong. After that, Yun called Insong to tell him that she was investigating Ji Hai at the moment. Then they followed Ji Hai who was bringing a bag and seemed to meet someone. When Insong wanted to corner her, it turned out she met with her customer. So the bag was filled with Mene's old dresses and toys which she secretly sold all the time. After that Insong asked who revealed about Ma Pai if it was not her. Ji Hai didn't reveal it to anyone but there was someone in Mr. Kim's house at that time which was Mr. Sim. Then there was a past scene three months ago about Mrs. Miran who talked to Mr. Sim. She told him to watch Insong, but Mr. Sim told her that he was not someone she was looking for then he left. But not so long after that, he got a call from his son that informed him he accepted in Bum Young Motors. Back to the scene when Ji Hai received call from Ma Pai, Mr. Sim heard it. Back to the present, Mr. Kim investigated about Mr. Sim and he found out the fact that Mr. Sim's son works in Bum Young Motors. 
Jung suggested to just talk to Mr. Sim straight away but in Seom refused her suggestion in order to see the bigger picture. At Bumyang, Mr. No told Mr. Oh about Mop Eye's death and Mr. Oh noticed that it was Mrs. Moran who planned it. Then Mr. Oh saw Mr. No's wound, which actually he got before killing Mop Eye. Mr. Oh asked what happened but Mr. No lied by saying he fell. Then Hyun Ho asked in Seom by phone to turn on the TV and watch the news about Mr. Kim. It turned out the news said the possibility of Mr. Kim died, and Song quickly turned off the TV since he was in Mr. Kim's house and there was Mene. After that Mene asked in Song about it but he said that the news was not true. Meanwhile, Mrs. Miran watched the news too, the press added the news that questioned Mrs. Miran as the Bumyan chairman because Barrow 4.0 seemed to have failed. Not so long after that Mr. O came and Mrs. Miran noticed it was Mr. O who requested the media to make that kind of news. Mr. O admitted it even he threatened her because he knew she was the one who planned to kill Mr. Kim. Back at Silver Lining, Mr. Kim the director asked if Mr. Kim the CEO was really sick. In Song said yes but he couldn't believe it and asked In Song to tell the truth for Silver Lining's good. At the car, Mr. Kim told In Song that Mr. O used his smart way to make Mrs. Miran got out of Bumyang, but In Song said that Silver Lining was in trouble too. After that, In Song told Mene the fact that her father was still alive but in the form of a phone. At first, Mine couldn't get it, but after she saw her father's video on the phone she could get it. In Song and Mr. Kim also told Mine not to tell anyone about this. Back at Mr. Kim's house, Yun asked In Song where Mr. Kim was. In Song told her that he was in Mina's room, and Song regretted he didn't do it earlier but Yun said it was urgent and it was dangerous for her though. Then Yun asked if Barrow 4.0 was just finished. But In Song noticed that Mr. Sim spied on them so he asked her to keep her voice down since it was secret. Mr. Sim quickly informed Mrs. Miran about it. After that, In Song met Mrs. Miran in her car. He informed that Barrow 4.0 was just finished and he wanted to exchange it with Mr. Kim's body. Hearing that, Mrs. Miran complimented that he really looked like a CEO. But before that, he asked her to do something first. It turned out he asked her to make a video when In Song did the press conference. In the video, Mrs. Miran looked like she was with Mr. Kim, but it was just technology but the press believed it since it looked so real. In Song told the public that he developed Barrow 4.0 at the moment and just finished it. At Silver Lining, Mrs. Miran was impressed by the technology but In Song said she looked so innocent. Then Mrs. Miran told him about the agreement earlier, she told him to go to a villa. Meanwhile, Mr. O was rampaging even he threw the glass at MR.NO because MR.NO seemed to want to take Mr. O somewhere. Mr. O told him to tell Mrs. Miran that he didn't want to. At Mr. Kim's room, Mr. Kim, In Song, and Young discussed about Mrs. Miran's request that she wanted In Song to come to the villa. It seemed to be dangerous, and In Song said they had to prepare for that. Then In Song talked to Detective Choi, and he told the detective about the villa meetup. Back to Mr. No, he told Mrs. Miran that Mr. O checked the validity of the Barrow 4.0 news, and Mrs. Miran thought that he must be confused at the moment. Then Mr. No asked her if she lost Mr. Kim because of Barrow. Hearing that, she just laughed because she never lost what was hers in her life. At Mr. Kim's house, Minae asked Mr. Kim about her favorite princess. But he answered it wrong since her favorite is Ariel the mermaid. After that Insom came, then Minae gave him her drawing in her class, she drew him, Mr. Kim, Yung and Mop Eye. Seeing that, Insom smiled. Insom and Yung arrived at the villa, there were Mr. No's men who checked them. Not so long after that, the police came and the men were surprised but at the end they successfully ran away. Then while the police checked the villa, In Song and Young were kidnapped by Mr. No to somewhere else. Mr. No said he changed the location due to the trust level between them that was low. In Song asked where Mr. Kim's body was, but Mr. No told them to give the Barrow 4.0 file first, Young quickly gave it to him. Then they quickly got into the truck where there was Mr. Kim's body and Young started the car. But when Insong wanted to get into the front part of the truck, Mr. No shot around Insong. Then Yun was asked to get out of the truck by Mr. No. But Insong asked her not to. Instead, he told her to just go without her. Mr. No threatened that if she didn't get out, Insong would die. But Insong told her that if she got out, she would die too. She was confused even though Mr. Kim asked her to go too. It turned out Yun drove backwards so that the Barrow server room was fired, and Insong managed to get into the truck safely. They successfully got out of the place in the end. When Mr. Kim was saying something about their success, suddenly his voice disappeared. After that Insong noticed something, the side barrow server room was fired, 
He remembered when Hyun Ho someone who was trapped in the phone only happens in the drama, when Mr. Kim said himself was the trial model, Mr. Kim who couldn't remember what happened before the incident happened and things that happened earlier that made him think Mr. Kim in the phone was just AI and not the real Mr. Kim. Then he checked when Mr. Kim activated Barrow, and it was exactly when the incident happened. Then in Song deactivated the system, and when Mr. Kim was in the middle of saying something, his voice suddenly disappeared again. Then back to the scene where Mr. Kim was chased by Mr. No's man. When Mr. Kim did something to his phone, it turned out he started the Barrow 4.0 program in his phone and quickly hit his phone. Back to the present, in Song and Yoon realized that the phone was Barrow and not Mr. Kim, they believed that the phone was Mr. Kim all this time, but Yoon said it made more sense if the phone was the Barrow that Mr. Kim activated earlier. Meanwhile, Mr. No said sorry to the incident earlier and Mrs. Miran said it happened already anyway. After that she told him to prepare for the launching of self-driving since they got Barrow 4.0 already. Mr. No said that Mr. O wouldn't let it happen, but Mrs. Miran just replied to him by saying the time had already come. In Shangbuk nursing home, and Song asked Detective Choi if the police could arrest Mrs. Miran, but Detective Choi said there was no proof yet that Mrs. Miran cooperated with the killer, he asked and Song to not tell anyone about Mr. Kim's current condition. Not so long after that, and Song's parents came, his father scolded and Song since his neighbors asked him about his son but he had no idea about it. It made and Song tell the truth to his parents. When his parents wanted to go home, his father's old car broke down. And Song suggested to his father to change it but quickly his father was angry. Then his mother said his car was just like a friend and a family to his father. In silver lining, and Song activated the Barrow program again and tell the truth to Barrow that he wasn't Mr. Kim. At first Barrow couldn't believe it but when and Song asked it to check the date where the Barrow program activated, it finally believed him. Then and Song thought that Mr. Kim activated Barrow in his phone so that they could seek justice for Mr. Kim. After that and Song still wanted to think that Barrow was Mr. Kim until all these things finished. In Bumyang, Mr. O gave Mrs. Miran a ticket to the US but Mrs. Miran said that she had been so busy lately. Then Mr. O told her that he wouldn't let her. But not so long after that Mr. O was arrested by the police along with Mr. No. Barrow, and Song and Young already knew about the news, and Song wondered why Mr. No wanted to do it for Mrs. Miran and Young said that was Mrs. Miran's way to promise the people she asked to cooperate, by giving them sweet promises. Then Barrow informed that Mr. No had no family and in Song thought he had to know what thing that caused Mr. No was so loyal to Mrs. Miran because it could be used to seek justice. After that Mr. O was interrogated by Detective Choi and Mr. O was angry and asked Detective Choi to take Mr. No too. But Detective Choi thought that there was no need to do that. Then Detective Choi closed the window and turned off the video record, after that he asked Mr. O how he met Mr. No. The detective then told Mr. O that he wanted to arrest Mrs. Miran so that he needed Mr. O's explanation. It turned out Mr. O's former driver suddenly resigned and his secretary recommended some candidates, of which MR.NO was the most outstanding one as if someone wanted it to happen. In Mr. Kim's house, Minhae said and Song was so cruel because he didn't let her talk with her father lately. He said that her father was busy but she asked to let her confirm it by talking to her father. Then Minhae took Barrow that she thought MRT, Kim. She asked Barrow but Barrow didn't answer and she thought that her father was so tired. But then Barrow, in the form of Mr. Kim's video, asked if Minhae really thought that itself was really her father and Minhae said yes. She even bought a new phone case for Barrow. Then there was a meeting that talked about how Bumyoung would do the vehicle trial of self-driving vehicle and it would be broadcasted worldwide. After finished, Mrs. Miran apologized to Insong that he had to face the incident earlier but Insong said that it was he who needed to apologize since he came back alive. Mrs. Miran suddenly laughed and thanked him for Barrel 4.0 since he did it without Mr. Kim. Back to the scene where they wanted to take Mr. Kim, Barrow suggested just giving the real Barrel 4.0 to Mr. No but they added the malware first in the file. Back to the present, Detective Choi's assistant gave Detective Choi someone's transactions and real estate's record. After seeing it, Detective Choi quickly left his room and told In Song. Then In Song met Mr. No in the jail, and Song amazed with his loyalty and he even brought up the topic about Mr. No who was blamed in the case of his boss corruption when he was still in the army. In Song then thought that Mrs. Miran who helped him to finish the case. After that In Song mentioned Mr. No's former boss named Moon who was a member of the House of Representatives at the moment. In Song influenced Mr. No that Mrs. Miran helped Moon too to get much money and had links to be the candidate of House Representative member back then. Then he revealed Moon's bank account in 2020 when he got 500 million won, exactly when Mr. No was cut in the army. Hearing that, Mr. No was so mad. 
After that, In Song asked Tian Ho something. At first he didn't want to do it, but finally In Song managed to convince him. It turned out Hian Ho pretended to be Mr. No's men and he met with Zhang Beck. Back to the scene between In Song and Mr. No, In Song convinced Mr. No to admit all what Mrs. Miran asked him, but Mr. No said that In Song faced with Bum Young, which best law firm worked for Bum Young, and Mr. No's confession didn't matter. Then In Song asked if he got proof, but he said that there was no proof because he was so loyal. But he thought that perhaps Zhang Beck recorded the phone calls since he cooperated with Mrs. Miran not because of loyalty, but personal interests. Then In Song asked why Zhang Beck had the proof, and Mr. Noi said that he needed it to make Mr. Kim stay alive, but since Mr. Kim was with In Song, Zhang Beck didn't have reason to keep Mr. Kim alive. Back to the scene between Hian Ho and Zhang Beck, Zhang Beck was asked to give his phone by Hian Ho for security. Then Zhang Beck said that he hadn't seen him before, but Hian Ho said that Mr. No was arrested, and from that day it was Hian Ho who took over everything, and Hian Ho asked him to give all the documents that he had. At first, Zhang Beck didn't admit it. But then Hian Ho mentioned the fact the money Zhang Beck took little by little and threatened Zhang Beck that he would tell the others. And finally, Zhang Beck gave the documents. Seeing that Hian Ho managed to do the plan, In Song was really happy. In the basement, Zhang Beck talked to someone on the phone and he needed to go abroad soon. There was Detective Choi who watched him from his car, but not so long after that, a car came and when Zhang Beck saw the car he quickly ran away, the person in the car chased him in the elevator and wanted to kill him. Luckily, Detective Choi stopped him. Back to the scene when Detective Choi planned to arrest John Beck with Insong. Insong said he wouldn't reveal the truth if Detective Choi told him that he was part of the police and Insong wanted to ask Hyun Ho to pretend as Mrs. Miran's men and make John Beck gives all the proof. Back to the present, in the elevator Detective Choi asked John Beck to call his boss. In the outside of Mr. Kim's house, Hyun talked with Insong and she said finally the next day was the moment the world knew who the real Mrs. Miran is. Then Yung brought up a topic about how she thought Insong was an odd person, but at the moment she already knew that Insong was a kind person. Yung also said to be careful for the next day and not to do things that hurt Insong. At the press conference, Mrs. Miran talked to the public about self-driving vehicle, not so long after that Insong came and long story short they tested the self-driving car together and it was broadcasted worldwide. At first, it worked well but then the self-driving car drove fastly and it was headed to a different route so it made Mrs. Miran uncomfortable. It was exactly like Insong planned and Mrs. Miran explained to the public that there was a bit of trouble and the self-driving car looked for the right route again. But Insong said that was why Mr. Kim refused to launch the self-driving car at the moment since Barrow 4.0 still got bugs like that but Mrs. Miran really wanted to launch it soon. Insong even revealed the fact that she tried to kill Mr. Kim. Then Ying broadcasted linked a video about the proof of Mr. Kim's condition to the public. Not so long after that the self-driving car stopped and the police were already around the car. After that Insong got out of the car and he asked Mrs. Miran to get out too. But it turned out that Mrs. Miran managed to run away by the car and she asked to go to the helicopter base. Then there was a past scene about Young who asked what if Mrs. Miran ran away, then Barrow made the plan B that makes Mrs. Miran goes to the police station herself. Back to the present, Mrs. Miran called someone on the phone and said that she headed to the helicopter base, not so long after that. She was informed that she was already at the helicopter base but when she got out of the car, it turned out the car window was just an illusion that looked real since the real condition was she was surrounded by the press and police and after that the police arrested her. She said that all the accusations were wrong but then there was Mr. Sim who admitted it. After that Insong said to the public all the victims of her beside Mr. Kim, he also gave the proof. The news was quickly spreading and many experts forecasted that it was the end of Bum Young. Mr. Oh watched the news and not so long after that he did suicide. At Mr. Kim's house, Barrow said goodbye to Insong, even though Insong said Barrow could stay that way and be a father figure for Minae, Barrow said that she would hate Barrow since she would feel betrayed and fooled in the future. Barrow also said that Mr. Kim was right about Barrow which still has bugs, that is having feeling, is such a failure. Then Barrow stopped the program itself and Young tried to explain it to Minae, hearing the explanation, Minae came to Insang and asked Barrow but Barrow was already gone and Minae cried. Then there was a scene about Mrs. Miran who was watching the baseball news in jail. Meanwhile, Insong's father showed off to people about Insong who asked him to take a picture together with the Korean's king of music. It turned out that Insong was an actor at the moment and Hyun Ho became his manager. Insong had a relationship with Yoon too, then suddenly Barrow activated again and ruined Insong and Yoon's time. At Mr. Kim's house, Minae took a book and asked Ji Hai whether Mop I would like it and Ji Hai said yes. Before heading somewhere, Minae came to Mr. Kim's room to ask permission to his father who was not awake yet. 